Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, friendly hackers. And some and sometimes wait, why am I hearing my oh my god, I'm hearing myself. This is awful. Stop. 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 Oh god. Uh okay. <sighs> Okay, good morning. Hello, how's everyone doing? <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> Let's get some music playing. Is that coming out of here? Yeah, that looks good. All right. <clears throat> okay, we got a hype train close. Frode, thank you so much for the 15 months. Dave FTW, thank you so much for the 25 months. Um <laughs> Nice cochlear simp plants. Woo! 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 They're not custom in-ear molds. Those haven't come yet because I've been too lazy to go to the... the what I forget the people who mold your ears. What's up with the Secret Service ear gear? I, it's, just, it's just comfy. It's just comfy. It keeps the cord out of the way. It's it's good audio quality. I have myself feeding back. He's a spy. Get him. Uh, so I fried my GPS receiver. Good thing I bought two. Ha. Desu, you know that when it says 5 volts that you don't put 50 through it, right? Probably urologist. I think they're audiologists are, are the actual people. Why schedule is not friendly to our fellow Australians and Asians? We want old Microsofty Gamazo back. Hmm. <laughs> Another unfinished project, <laughs> but it's faster with fifty volts. Um, I've actually been thinking about doing an overclocking stream if anyone would be interested, but the overclocking isn't going to be of uh of computers it would be of like random ICs so like 10 cent ICs maybe we could get some like AVR like some cheap things when I say overclocking I mean like liquid nitrogen and like overvolting by a factor of like five <laughs> um it would probably a little bit more like it would probably be more like physics-based overclocking. When I say physics-based overclocking, I mean that we would like measure the results that we're getting, measure the heat differences, measure the like clock rate differences, and use that to try to build a mathematical model of the processor. Um <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh Blue or black for the hundred biddies? Ah, science, Kappa. <laughs> I mean, now that I have the capability of doing the most rudimentary machining, that means I can make like little things that allow us to maybe, uh, maybe basically like encapsulate something or make like a small, like little liquid nitrogen bath or a little pump line or something through that. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's a it's a fun thing. Brehernad, thank you so much for the two months. <laughs> it's three volts, but I put five through it because UART is awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. The classic, the classic. You had a you used your five volt UART cable instead of your three volt UART cable that look identical. Ah. <laughs> Yesterday's stream was too short. Today will be larger. Oh God, maybe. Yesterday was a longish stream. It wasn't crazy. Ah, <laughs> uh, stream hype. Hell yeah. Ah! I feel like I'm not hearing myself enough. Hmm. 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 Hel hello. I'm hearing myself only quite subtly. 
test. Oh, there. Okay. Okay. I think that's good. Wow. Now I can. Okay. Now I can definitely hear myself. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going based on the feedback. Basically, the the better the feedback I have, the uh the better my audio will be because I'll hear better of like what I'm actually producing. Like right here, I can barely hear myself, but here I can hear myself quite well. Um, and that will guide me towards the microphone, hopefully, a little bit better. Um, <laughs> yesterday wasn't the longest stream. In the last minutes, he said, okay, we're starting the stream. Oh, God, you're, you're totally right. Ah, uh, yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> Um, what about your Freedom Cherry, your Freedom Cherry project, or the Emulated project? Um, so, what we've decided is we're going to schedule, this is the schedule that we have, let me, um, let me get my Twatch up, uh, Fuego Fox, Twitch, TV, Gamozo, schedule? Um, oh my god, that's actually the link. Okay, so here's... Here's what we have basically planned and set up. Uh, how do I, how do I, how do, okay. So basically, let's go to next week. So basically the schedule is educational optimization on Fridays, hacking and fuzzing things on Saturday, Saturdays, and educational fuzzing on Sundays. And that's kind of what we have set up for now. Um... That doesn't mean we won't stream other days, but other days we wouldn't necessarily be following a schedule or a regular content or a regular theme. But basically, hacking and fuzzing things and educational fuzzing, I put them in this order because hacking and fuzzing things will probably do like our researchy, devy, try things. And then educational fuzzing will probably actually like bolt that all together and describe like what we did and what we learned in a little bit better tone, hopefully, maybe, probably not. Um, and then educational optimization, we're probably going to go and just learn things about perf. We're going to learn things about like how computers actually work. Uh, different, maybe we'll measure L1, L2, L3 latency, you know, how many people have actually measured those latencies or written a tool that can, can measure those latencies. There's a, there's a lot of different like fun projects that I think would bring a lot of optimization and all of these things for optimization are largely going to be like one or two hour proof of concept programs that will write to see whether or not something behaves in the way that we expect. And that might be making a quick multi-threaded application to see like a synchronization model, how that works, how it performs, how it scales, um, all the way down to like CPU microarchitectural, you know, sorts of things. So we'll see. Um, the Freedom Phone... Uh, I didn't add the Freedom Phone to the schedule because the Freedom Phone wasn't going to be delivered, but I just, I just yesterday got a shipping update from them. Let me see if I can pull that up. Um, where the, f where the fudge, where the fudge, uh, Freedom Phone shipping update, Freedom Phone. Leo Slaps, thank you so much for the 44. Hell yeah. Pogarino, how is your stream? The scam phone is shipping? That is allegedly the case. I don't know what clear cellular is. What is clear cellular? Uh, where's the shipping updates? Mm, um, shipping updates. Uh, I think this is the one. We're thrilled to say that all back order to Freedom Phones are shipping this month. This was on November 1th. Um, after a battle of with supply chains and global chip shortages, we're kicking into gear and completely fulfilling our entire back order of Freedom Phones. I love how everything they, they write is so woe is me. Everything is like the world is out to get them, but they're they're... They're pushing on through it. Thank you for sticking with us and helping in the fight against big hyphen tech. 
Oh, we're getting fifty dollars in cryptocurrency. Woo! <laughs> It's important that Americans are able to use a phone that's uncensored and secure from prying eyes. <laughs> oh, God. I really hope this reads to people in the EU different than it does to people in the US. I hope that this is just... I hope this just sounds like a parody or satire. <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, saw so you're posting battle stations? I must know. Is this stool still in your possession? It is. I do still have the stool. <laughs> the evil gumbo's alive. <laughs> uh, Lick, thank you so much for the 17 months. Hell yeah. Sounds like some America. All right. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Well. Uh... <laughs> Doesn't sound like satire over here either. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did you get anywhere with Rust on MIPS yesterday? I had to dip out early. We did and didn't. We made, we made complete progress. We figured out everything about it, and what we figured out about it was that LLVM uh, doesn't work. Um, here, let's, let's do a... <laughs> uh, why did I... What? I might have opened Steam on accident. Um, <laughs> okay, so if we go and go into MIPS test, and we change this specification, uh, let's just say this, and we'll call this MIPSL PC Windows MSVC cough.json. And then we'll go into here, PC one is this, and then we'll change this to that same thing. Mipsel PC Windows MSVC cough. And this is what I would have to use if I wanted to generate a cough based object uh, for MIPS with Rust or Clang or LVM. So we'll do a cargo build target Mipsel PC, and then we'll do, what are we going to do here, chat? What are we going to do? Da dash, 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 something, uh, Z build standard core. Real, real tilted tree coming in clutch today. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're building this, and it's, uh, oh, oh. Oh, that's, oh, no, oh, hmm, that's not very good. Um, so if we take this command, uh, and we just run it in isolation, um, you'll see that we get this, uh, we get this delicious snack. And the snack is a segful. And if we do GDB args, and we run this in a deb debugger, we'll see that what Clang does is, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, Clang just jumps to null. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Clang just jumps to null. So, so, um, yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> So we decided that this is not going to work uh, very well. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the problem here, the actual root cause of this is in LLVM, they basically have this, there's this uh, create MC object streamer. And I deleted the code, so hopefully we'll be able to find like a good uh, doxygen reference or something like that. Um, here's a doxygen. So what you'll find is that this function, this, uh, I actually don't want doxygen. I want LLVM. What's the, what are the code viewer thingies? Um, uh, what are they called? Doxygen is dox. Uh, there's a, I think it's like four letters. Um, VS Code Online, GitHub. Ah, uh, I'm trying to think of the code indexer. Lixer, there we go. Three letters, not four. 
Uh, does anyone have elixir on this? Okay, well, maybe not. Okay, we'll just do this. Uh, we'll see if we can find this through here. It, it, it's not ideal. That's where we were. Um, and... Oh, yeah, it's in a header file. Yeah, because that's how they do things. Okay, so in here, if you have a cough triple, which is like the Windows object file triple, uh, it will call this uh, cough streamer ctor function. And the ctor function is initialized basically in your uh, target specification. And that target specification, it defaults to uh, null pointer. And I forget what the target is for this. Does anyone remember like MIPS target something, 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 something? Uh, um, oh, I think it's, uh, we can actually go to LLVM, uh, lib target MIPS, MC target desk, and then we want this. And this is where the MIPS one is created, I think. Yeah, so here you can see it's registering like an elf streamer, um, but since it never registers a cough streamer, um, yeah, it just jumps to null, because there's no null check. There's no, like, hey, uh, cough isn't supported on this architecture because the function pointer for the streamer's null. Instead, it just jumps to, uh, the uninitialized null value. More specifically, it is, it is initialized to null. Um, but, yeah, uh, yep. Yes, uh, this is the, what is this, the MIPS... The MIPS target, the... I forget what it's called. It had a fantastic name. <laughs> it's like the the MIPS target or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Checks on null pointer are slow. Yeah, exactly. Patch is welcome. Uh, we did look into what it would take to patch it, and it actually would be a, a pretty significant amount of work. Unfor unfortun unfortunately. Um... Okay. <laughs> but yeah, le legitimately, if it was as simple as, like, registering a generic streamer, um, yeah, I'd totally do that. But it turns out these streamers are actually uh, specific to the architecture. Slightly. Like, they probably use some generic... Basically, it would probably take us a couple days to add support for that. Uh, but yeah. Um, that one guy that's running MIPS, he only runs Linux, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, chat, welcome to the stream. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to f familiarize yourself with the, the schedule. Uh, add, uh, command, schedule this. Bam! Okay, don't forget to check out the schedule and familiarize yourself with that and see what days you want to come here. But, uh, basically our goal is we want to fuzz, uh, Windows NT 4.0 running MIPS. So, uh, I've been downloading some NT stuff, uh, NT 3.5 to NT. Okay, so in here I have a couple different things I've downloaded off of beta archive, uh, whatever it is. Uh, MIPS 4.0 Windows. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, beta archive. Okay. Um, oh, this is not what I wanted, actually. Um, let's just search for uh, NT 4.0. And then WinWorld PC. There we go. Hey, it's in. How are you doing today? I saw your feature in uh, Live Overflow's video. Hell yeah. Didn't NT4 come with Space Cadet Pinball Game? Yes, it did. Okay, so the one that we're working with is specifically uh, these two. So we have the... Uh, this is NTSP1. So 4.0.1381.1 checked. Uh, and we have those downloaded here, and we have the checked build, um, which has an ISO in it, and then we also have the uh, free build, which is the non-debug build. So basically, uh, Microsoft has pretty much always released these check builds. You'll see like CHK or checked or whatever, uh, and checked builds typically are built with lighter levels of optimization, which then makes it a lot easier to debug because the the things that you're traditionally looking for 
um, like things being on the stack or variables being homed to places where you can actually see them and they haven't been like optimized out because they're not used in a certain part of a function. Uh, inlining is usually turned off. Um, a bunch of things that make it really annoying to debug code are basically uh, turned off in check builds. So, as a result, uh, check builds typically run quite a bit slower than official builds. Um, and then on top of that, um, uh, checked builds also will have debug assertions and stuff added as well. So, there's those sorts of things that are kind of here. Hell yeah! Yep, all the asserts, all the like, all the debug assertions, fewer optimizations, some things like inlining turned off. Do check builds still exist nowadays? Um, they, they do. Um, you can only really get them for like the kernel components instead of the whole OS. Um, and further, they are, <laughs> so... Ever since, like, Windows 7, honestly, even, like, Windows XP, checked builds have started to kind of just not work. Um, so, basically, uh, just over time, the amount of debug assertions kind of just grew to the point that they were just... People weren't running checked builds because modern OSs rely on compiler optimization so heavily. Like, the way that we write code nowadays, with all of the abstractions and templating, uh, really kind of necessitates high levels of compiler optimization. So, basically, the checked builds fell further and further behind in terms of, like, relative performance to the, to the free builds. Um... And thus, fewer and fewer developers were using the checked bu builds, and thus, fewer and fewer developers were actually checking that their assertions were sane. And slowly but surely, they're just, there's kind of just too many debug assertions now. There's just, like, you try and boot a check build, and you, you might not even make it to the desktop anymore. Um, but it, it's just really hard to maintain, like, a, a full debug operating system like that. Uh, a check build is basically a debug build without the debug info? Correct. So these ISOs will likely have debug info. So let's take a look at that. Um, I think this is an important thing uh, to look at. So let's just look at... I'm going to copy these ISOs to a nice working directory. Um, so we're going to do... Uh, we're just going to call this... Um, eh, just ISOs. And then we'll copy from 4.0, free this star.iso to here. And then we'll also grab the checked build. Oh. Mm -hmm. Should have hold, should have held a key there. Uh, star.iso to here. Okay, so now we have these two different isos. Check builds are typically a little bit larger, and that, that is to be expected. Uh, and then we'll make a free directory. Uh, we'll extract with 7-zip, uh, just because I know 7-zip can extract these. Okay, and then we'll go to, uh, we'll make a checked build, and we'll do the same thing for the checked build, uh, this. Okay, so these likely have symbols. It definitely varies. Um, let's take a look at the free build. Um, support, debug, uh, MIPS. Okay, so here uh, we should have symbols for everything. So if we look at exe, we'll have debug symbols for all of our stuff here. Uh, what's really cool is that you'll also see that we have debug symbols for pinball, right? Um, and I think this is before... There were, um, I think this was prior to, uh, private versus public symbols. Uh, do I have cab extract? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna try to, let's take a look at, let's take a look at a kernel, I guess. Um, hmm, cab extract free... Where was it? Support, debug, MIPS, exe. Oh, and here's the debuggers. There's CDB. Um, wow, that's pretty cool. We actually have debuggers. 
Pinball Odes? I have Fuzz Pinball and found bugs in it before. Um, Eggsy, what is the kernel called? Is it Entos kernel? Nice. Uh, and let's just look at Entos kernel. They also have kernel and P, but we're just gonna look at Entos kernel because we're running a uh, single threaded. Uh, hmm. Uh, file. Ooh, that's not a good sign. Ah, uh, what is this? Um, this is a DI debug info file. It's kind of interesting. Interesting. Let's see, uh, wasn't this a cab format? Okay, uh, cab extract. We're gonna see uh, pinball.debug. Okay, this is also a DI. Can Gidor read this? I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see if I can find like debug di file format, like Windows. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if a uh, thing like Gidra is going to be able to open that. Uh, Use debug.com on WinNT to load them. Yeah, so we could, we could potentially do that as well. Um, let's see if it can... Uh, so what we'll want to do is we'll want to get free MIPS, uh, entos kernel.exe. There we go. That looks pretty good. Uh, mm, real mode. No. 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 No, I'm not, I'm not really feeling real mode, to be honest. Um, I mean, let, let's, let's see. Let's see how much is real mode. Horny mushroom, hell yeah. Unless they had different stages. Because I think this is definitely going to be real mode. Yeah, this is definitely real mode. These are like bias interrupts. Which is really interesting. Um, but I'm guessing this is going to immediately branch. It's interesting that this is not like a PE. But, huh. Okay. Anyways, um, we're not going to go down that path. We're going to start working on getting uh, code running. If we could have just loaded those as PDBs, we would have like, kind of compared some of the difference, the differences between these uh, systems. Um, but it looks like that's going to be a pain. Actually, we could open up... Uh, we can take a look at Pinball, because we know that that's not going to have like a real mode stub. I think that's just the way that they probably wrote the Entos kernel uh, bootloader, which is slightly confusing. Uh, pinball dot exe. Um, oh, and that might be compressed as well. So let's go to ISOs. Uh, cab extracts. Uh, free. Mips pinball dot eggs. Okay, there we go. We got pinball.exe. Nice. <laughs> write an elf loader. We'll, we'll probably write some uh we'll probably write some elf loaders. Okay, so we got pinball and hopefully this is a 30 no. You know what? I think it just doesn't support MIPS. Um that's really interesting. Huh. MIPS R6? Uh, we actually don't want R6. We technically want R2, so we might be best. MIP64 default, Little Indian, Visual Studio. Probably should use the filter here. Um, MIP64, Little Indian. Okay. Is that not a PE? 
I'm really confused. <laughs> That's a PE. Does Gija not support PEs for MIPS? Hmm. 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 Interesting. Interesting. Ida sees these better out of the box. Yeah, I don't have Ida on this computer. Uh, let's see what Binary Ninja can do. Uh, I don't know if Binary Ninja is going to be able to open this either. It's a... It's a tough one. Um, uh, NT, ISOs, Pinball. Um... Well, I'll be damned. I'll be damned. All right. Yeah, this is definitely correct. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Binja coming in hot. Um, all right. Wow. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that's MIPS. See, Binja does it correctly. They actually just parse the PE and then they apply the architecture that it specifies. <laughs> it just kind of makes sense. So I'm trying to see if we would be able to find like an easily fingerprintable function. I don't think we're going to be able to forcibly load a P, uh, PE in here. I don't think that's actually a PE file, but let's, let's see. Uh, hmm. I don't know why load is grayed out there. Ah, <sighs> hmm. Hmm. As long as the PE loader is sufficiently generic, I'd expect it to work. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's... PEs don't change based on the architecture, other than, like, maybe some relocations and stuff. But, um, okay, we have a way of looking at things. We don't have a way of applying symbols. Uh, I don't know. Um, let's see if we can... Um... So we have these debug tools. Whoa, what's expand symbol? Okay. That's going, okay. That's just going to uh, basically install them on the system. Um, let's go and do that. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow what we made uh, yesterday. We're gonna blow this all away. Um, dump. Mipsel, NT Mips, NVRAM, and uh, we'll keep Quake Mips. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna show like uh, how we get this set up. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to go get uh, Windows NT 4.0. We're specifically, specifically using um, this SP1 build here. So this is the one, this is the one that we're using. Um, Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hop into this MIPS build. And the way that we're going to do that is we have this run, which has the command of how we're going to run this. Um, and also this we can say uh, uh, network. Actually, we don't need the networking stuff. We don't need the PCAP. Um, also, I don't think I wanted to delete that. Uh, one of those files I didn't want to delete. Which one was it? Um, hmm, is it, what did we delete? We want Mipsel BIOS and Mipsel BIOS. Okay. We can just look, we're following these instructions. Windows NT4 MIPS. Does uh, Binja have a free pro trial on the internet? Not that I'm aware of. Actually there's a, yeah, there's Binja cloud. Okay. So we're going to make a, we're going to make a disc. Um, and yeah, we want to make a larger disc. We're going to make, uh, we're going to do two gigs because that sounds safer. Um, what do you, what do you mean? How is that not a valid 2000 M? What? <laughs> what? 
What? What? <laughs> Copy to weird character? Yeah, I must have. Create FQ cow 2 NT4 Q cow 2. We'll do two gigs. Hey, there we go. Okay. So uh, we're going to make a disk. So we're making a disk that can support two gigs. And then we're going to update run uh, to support this. So this is NT. 4.qcow2, so that's our disk. The machine type is Magnum. We have a user-based, uh, we don't need this anymore. We have a user-based uh, networking stack. We have a CD-ROM plugged in, which is the installer for Visual C++. I'm actually gonna break this out into a nicer format, um, just so you can see a little bit better what's going on here. Okay, CD-ROM. Bink, and then we'll also reorganize this uh, a smidgen. So um, we'll put this here, this here, this here, uh, this here. Okay. So basically, this is a Magnum machine. That's the that's the type of machine. Um. So Magnum is the type of MIPS machine that we'll be emulating. 128 megabytes of RAM. We're using a user redirected uh, networking stack. This works on both Linux and Windows out of the box. So it's really nice. Like this same command should just work on Windows if, if you want to follow along. Um, then we have a, we're basically defining like a, 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 a non-volatile memory storage for the uh, system. So basically when we set the time and date and boot order, this is basically like the, this is the the flash or the like non-volatile RAM that would be on a motherboard that's holding like the boot options and stuff. Okay, then we have the uh, I'd break ISO into a variable. You think I know how to do variables in Bash? Uh, you, you, is this right? I don't I don't know how to do variables. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much for the 13 months. Hell yeah. No, that's not right. Exactly. That's why we didn't do it. No spaces. Uh, do I have to put this in quotes? <sighs> Damn it, chat. <laughs> it was working before just fine. Is that fine? Is that fine? Okay, okay, okay. There, there you go. See, this is why we don't do no spaces around equal. Does that matter? Why would that matter? <laughs> because bash. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> okay, um we're going to copy uh we're going to copy the uh WinNT workstation SP1 ISO here. And then this. So in run. It quote ISO? What? What? Really? That's dumb. ISO equals. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we need to go get this firmware. And the firmware we can find. Uh, here, this Magnum firmware. Okay, uh, CP downloads, setup, make, uh, unzip Magnum. Okay, and then we're gonna make a new directory, and this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be, like, uh, Kimu. And we're gonna move the Magnum... WinNT ISO into there. We're going to move the run command. We're also going to move what else do we want? Um, NT4. And then I think... Is it NT prom? NT prom and call it Mipsel BIOS. Okay. So we're going to copy the NT prom 
and we're gonna copy that to this uh, Mipsil BIOS. Okay, so now this should allow us to boot. Ah, uh, ah. Uh? Okay, that looks good. So what we have to do is we have to go into Run Setup, Initialize System, Set Default Configuration. We're gonna say 1024 by 768, floppy size, no, and then the SCSI host ID. And those are all really important. And then same with this, this is setting like the boot priorities and stuff that will allow us to access the CD-ROM. Um, environment variables, we don't care about those. Set time, this doesn't do anything. Set ethernet address, oh, this is actually really important. Um, unicast MAC address generator. Okay. Um, we cannot use this because these can be broadcast. We ha there's a specific website that mentions that it generates unicast. There's a big difference. There's a big fucking difference. Um, random locally administered unicast MAC address. Perfect. All right. I like it. I like it. Okay. That is what I like to see. Okay. So this is our gonna be our MAC address, B-E-2-D, 8 34 56 73 Okay, that's written to NVRAM, return to main menu. This is going to cause it to freeze because it's rebooting, uh, and we should be good. Uh, we'll just forcibly shut it down and relaunch it. Now, uh, you can see that we have a slightly different resolution. We should be able to run a program, and we can do CD slash, and this is the directory on the CD, and MIPS, and then we'll do arcinst.exe or arcinst, which is installing basically, this is this is like the grub installer. This is installing the bootloader. So we're gonna make a small partition here. We're gonna do five megabitos. That looks fantastic. And then uh, that's it. That's all we had to do. So now we have that. And now we're ready to install Windows and we'll do a setup loader. And this is gonna load the empty setup. We already have that boot partition that kind of has a bootloader that allows us, us to launch that NT partition. Okay, so we're gonna do a basic NT install. We're just gonna go through here, hit F8 to agree, hit enter. We're gonna install on the 2043 remaining megabitos. Uh, we'll do, uh, I don't really care if it's FAT or NTFS. We're gonna do FAT just because it's probably easier to work with. This might be a big, disk for fat, so we might regret this, but we'll see. So this is now going to examine my disk. And this installer is bringing back memories? Yeah, this installer did not change up until like XP. This is still the same installer. Two gig is fine for fat, okay. Fat is 32-bit uh, signed, right? Okay, there we go. So we'll restart. Once again, this restart will just kind of freeze. Once we feel like it's frozen enough, uh, we'll just go and manually rerun it. And now we have a start menu option, uh, or a boot menu option for start NT, space, original configuration, and here we go. So it detects that we have 128 megs of RAM, which is good. And then we're going into the NT setup. Uh, so this is the standard like two-stage Windows installer. Have you ever done graphics like this? Uh, yeah, I've done some like some early OS dev. I did some graphics like that, and then we're gonna do a custom install. We're gonna we're gonna add all of our options. Okay, so we're gonna have the name is Denny one 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 one. The organization is Meta Construct, and the computer name is going to be G three three Cat Work. Okay, uh, we're not going to set a password. We don't need a repair disk. And then we're going to go into here, and we're going to make sure that everything is, is checked. We want to install everything. We want to... Uh, this is why we picked a 2 gig system. This is a, this is a big system. 3 out of 3, 0 out of 4, 4 out of 4. 9 out of 9, 3 out of 3. Okay, so this is telling me... 13 out of 13, 3 out of 3, 4 out of 4, 9 out of 9, 3 out of 3. Okay, so this is a complete 37 meg install. 
Um, and it is on a network. It's wired to the network. Start search. It identified the adapter. We're going to say TCP IP. Uh, what other services can I have? Uh, oh, oh, there's some good... Uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't mean to select that. Okay, whatever. Uh, there we go. Yep, DHCP. We should get a DHCP lease just fine. Migrating Winsock 1, 1 to 1, 2. All right. And we're just going to go and continue here. This is pretty much a default DHCP install. Nothing too fancy here. Uh, work group. We're going to call work group just in case that breaks things. I would like to rename that, but sometimes changing that can break things. We can get books now. Yeah, exactly. We'll do GMT. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's see if this sticks. Uh, let's go 1997, January 17th, and that looks like a good time. Okay. Yep, that's our screen. That looks great. Okay. Did they ship the Freedom Phone? That actually, we just got an update that they will be shipping, but I don't know if they have shipped yet. Okay. All right. So this is the environment that we'll be fuzzing in. And it's a very unique environment because, for those who have not noticed yet, this is NT running on MIPS. MIPS is a different computer architecture compared to your standard Intel AMD sort of uh, x86 architecture. MIPS is completely different. It's a RISC architecture, uh, and this has not been supported since NT 4.0. 0.0 SP1. I think in SP2 is when MIPS support was removed. So this is MIPS 64-bit. This is very old 64-bit, uh, which is just really interesting and really fun. So let's see if we can get this date and time to actually commit. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why all the other things are saving in the prom. But this isn't, so we're just gonna we're gonna try and get this time to stick. Um, I don't know why it's being fussy. Is risk the future? Yeah, risk is risk is definitely the future. Why not power alpha? Neither of those run in uh, Kimu. Mips is the only one that runs in Kimu. Also, uh, we're probably gonna end up writing an emulator, and I'm not gonna write an emulator for other architectures because Mips is the best architecture to write emulators for, except for Risk Five. Um, okay. So, uh, run setup, manage, we're going to um, set the time, and we're going to do 010196. Uh, and then time, we're going to do 10, 10, 10. So that sets the time, but it, it doesn't seem to save it. And I don't know why. Let's see what happens when I do this. Um, is the system Y2K compatible? Who knows? Just to edit the NVRAM. Maybe you have to emulate, emulate an RTC. Need to replace the RTC battery in Kimu. Oh, man. So I'm guessing this date's going to be fine. Yeah, that's 1010. But I, I think I'm going to lose that when I reboot. But I do have a date, which is good. And that is what I set. And that's ticking at a reasonable, reasonable interval. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to install those symbols. Um, because I forgot that we had those symbols. Um, we're going to take a look at kind of all the things, actually, D drive, E drive. D drive is where we're installed. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh, yeah. Add or remove software. Okay, so that's everything. 
Um, browse the CD. Okay. Nice. So we're going to take a look at support. And then, what's books? Okay, that's cool. Uh, this. So we're going to run expand sim. Um, so that's going to expand them to system 32. So right now, if we go into system 32, we shouldn't have symbols or win and T or what, whatever, wherever it's going to, I think this is going to, okay. I don't know if that did anything. Um, I don't think that did. Uh, let's open up a command prompt and we'll go into E. Let's go into support, um, debug, type expand, uh, oh, okay, um, uh, expensive, I see, okay, and, um, I need to give it... The CD-ROM drive letter, okay, uh, that is uh, E. And then I need to give it uh, D colon slash winnant. Okay, so this is installing symbols, and this should also be uh, decompressing them. So in here, we should probably now have like a, a symbol or something like that. I don't, I don't fucking know. Expanded to winnant. Symbols. Oh, F5. Here we go. Symbols. So this is installing all of the symbols for the system, uh, which is great. Solve debug symbols for everything. <laughs> D colon. Oh, I see. I was very confused why I was getting D colon. But this is also extracting them. Um, this is how it is intended that you debug on the system. So... This is great because this is going to get us the best debugging experience. <laughs> and it hasn't failed. I guess there's no reason any of this stuff should fail because it's all tested to work with all of these things. Like, literally all of these things are designed to work together. Okay, total increase, 145 files. This expanded to 8.4 megs. Oh, no. Oh, no. What are we at now? Do we get a pie chart? Yes, we do. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. So that looks really good. So now we have win and T symbols. And we have all of the symbols installed for everything. Um, now what we can also do is MIPS. And in here we have symbols and then all these executables. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just, we're gonna go and slurp those. And the way that we're gonna slurp those is we're gonna go into here, browse, support, debug, MIPS. Um, ooh, it contains hidden files. Let's get that fixed. Options. Yep, that, single. Um, show all, display the full path. Display compressed with an alternate color. Sure, that's a cool option. Hide file extensions for known types. Nope, we don't want that. Okay, bam. Okay, control A, copy. We're literally gonna try and copy and paste these. Uh, we, we're starting to have a lot of windows open at this point. Okay, so we're going to go into the D drive. We're going to make a new folder. This is going to be a debug. We'll call it debug because we might be typing this into a command prompt. And then we're just going to paste all of these. Okay, so... Uh, the symbols, we've installed our symbols. So the symbols have been installed... And then we have all of these. So all the debuggers are set up. Um, is there anything else we want off this CD? So I just want to get everything off the CD before we switch CDs. Um, MIPS. These are just going to be all the cabs and stuff. Oops. Um, 
support SCSI tool. Dep tools. Okay. Books. Start here. Okay. Okay. Are these books good? <laughs> Blank page. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to now switch to our uh, Visual Studio installer CD. And can we do that from... Uh, does anyone know how to do that in Kimu? There's a there's a way to do it. Um uh, Kimu copy Magnum this VCPP this. Can you have multiple CDs? Yeah, um but there's a Kimu monitor change CD. Change CD ROM. Uh, info block. Um, okay, uh, change SCSI 0 CD2, and we're going to change this to whatever that new file is. This. I'm just going to put that in another monitor. Uh, VCPP 4.00 risk MIPS. Where am I typing that? Apparently the wrong thing. Uh, VCPP 4.00 risk mips.iso. Okay, so that has now changed the CD. Yeah! Oh my god, that worked! Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. That's really cool! Okay. It didn't blue screen. Yeah, it worked. Okay. So now we're going to install Visual Studio. And this time we can install all the features. Uh, everyone look away. Everyone look away. Okay. Um, now, custom. And what we want to do is we want to install everything. Yeah, give me the source code. Give me the debug and release static. Debug and release shared. Non-multi-threaded, okay. I think that's everything. I want every single feature. Every single feature. We're going for a maximum install. Unicode, oh yeah. Oh, SQL Server. Tools. Oh, let's make sure none of these have details. They don't. Books Online. This is what we couldn't install before because this... Uh, oh, we also need to change the path. Directory. Uh, D. D. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have to do that again? I don't think so. Okay, so this is everything selected. Uh, space required 300 megs, but we, we have 1.6 gigs. We're going to do... Uh, what do we want? We want the modern. We want the modern style. All right, there we go. Now we have a full install. And this is going to include the... Um, this is going to include the... Uh, uh, help files, like the MSDN documents, which is honestly really important because we need documentation <laughs> because we can't really use modern documentation. We can, but sometimes it won't necessarily apply. All right. Ermagerd Birks. <laughs> this would take forever back in the days? Yeah. Are you going to hack ancient government servers? 
Uh, running with these new zero days? Oh, hell yeah. We're going to be in there. <laughs> Still takes forever today. No progress was made in 25 years. <laughs> Still vulnerable to eternal blue. <laughs> okay. Yeah, register environment variables. Okay. So there we did it. Do we want TGS 3D graphics tools? Yeah, 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 uh-huh. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> what even is TGS 3D? It didn't even want you to reboot? How? Yeah, we installed something without a reboot. It's crazy. The aesthetics, look at the gradient. Yeah, we can also try and change the resolution of the monitor. <laughs> oh, we got headers? Oh, we, did I see a banana? Did I see a banana model? I'm pretty sure I saw a model for a banana. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, set up for all users. Good. Uh, we'll customize your MSVC for use with that. It involves registering the three space control, adding directories under that. If it is currently running, please exit. Um, I'm just going to close this, but it, it's not. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh no. I have admin privs. Okay. Uh mm, all right. Okay, that's good. STL? <laughs> oh, look at that. Okay. Uh let's see. All right, so let's do it. Let, it, it said to log out and log back in. So we're going to close all programs. We're going to log out and log back in. <laughs> Click here to begin. Oh, that was that was cute. No install shield. Oh, Joff Bowser wants a plushie. Joff Bazos, you're gonna be, you're gonna be a common cold. Scam, 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 speak British. Uh, okay, okay, so what we need to do here is we need to go and open our developer studio. So, our Fortran power station. Okay. Uh, do we have books? Do we have books? We hope so. Oh, is this the books? Can I search? Uh, that's fine. Okay, let's look for, uh, um, NC create, f f uh, let's just look at create, create file. There we go. Oh, whoop. Well, oh, I did it wrong. Uh, create file. Uh-huh. And this. Oh, there we go. There we go. We got documentation. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. I didn't mean to click on that link. Go back. I didn't mean to click on that. Oh, oh, no. Uh, is this back? Is it, 
Um, this is back. Hmm. That. Yep, we made it. Okay, so we have all the documentation here. Um, and this is actually pretty pretty good documentation. Like Microsoft, the re the reason Microsoft really took off is their documentation. Like, uh, legitimately. The ability to write code in an environment like this is so much higher. Uh, I didn't mean to dock that there, but uh, I guess... Fuck it. I'll put it there. Old MSDN docs, yeah. Having a local copy of MSDN? Yeah, let's see how, let's see how much disk we're using now. Um... My computer... We're now at 709 megs out of, uh, out of two gigs. So we still have over a gig free, which is fantastic. But yeah, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, right through overlapped async stuff, backup semantics, like, Windows has had some pretty good support for things for a while. So we're going to make a new project workspace. Eh, I don't know. We, we might do dev on the command line because it, it's just better. Um, We should have CL. Yep, we do. And now we can go to... Oh, TGS 3D. We never explored this. What do we have? What scene viewer? Oh! 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 Mamma mia! Oh! Oh! Yes! <laughs> oh my god! Oh! <laughs> Unbelievable! Dude! How is this this responsive? <laughs> oh my god! Dude, this is so cool! I am blown away! This is phenomenal! I, like, dude, imagine doing this in, in 1992, 1993! Like, this would have blown people's minds. Better than Linux Day. We got an apple? Yeah, that's an apple. Uh, what else? What else? What's solar? Uh, uh, did I use up my free trial? Oh, no. <sighs> Crack it! <laughs> Silicon graphics. Template graphics software. Wow. Wow. I mean, that is some cool software. Let's look, uh... Form app? MDP? Is this gonna build? Is this going to build? Is the... Is this is this gonna build? Uh oh these are are these hmm What was the error? Why why aren't we able to load that? Word demo What's word three D? Oh my god I, uh, this is back when you could just load arbitrary DLLs from, like, a document.
<laughs> include lib program. Yeah, we would need to, we would need to crack that. I just I just don't think we're gonna be able to crack this software. Hmm. It might just be really, really tough. <laughs> uh, let's look at uh, debug quick. Let's get some. Let's see if we can get some code running. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, MIPS KD NTSD. Really? Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, we have a real debugger. Oh, we have a real debugger. Uh. Oh! Can I, um. Yeah, these are cough symbols. So, yeah, and it found the symbols. Like, we have full fucking symbols. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Oh, oh, that's so cool. Wow. Wow. Certainly better than GDB. Uh, yeah, of course it is. Um, is there not, uh... Hmm. Is there not DB? Really? What did they change that to? Um... Uh-huh. There we go. Better crack open the manual? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go find the manual. Um. Uh-oh. Is there- is there no manual? Let's see if we have docs here. DV. Yeah. Display memory. Display ANSI, display double words, display 8-byte reels, DI. Um, DT, what? 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 Is this, uh, not for this? Hmm. Yeah, I feel like this is right. Uh, I want locals. That's the variables window for... Is there a debugger built into this? Yeah, I think there is. So we also have that. Um, query results. Query, um, actually I want local. Um, there's got, what? Hmm. That's strange. I'm also curious. Let's try it CDB as well. They should be the same. Yeah, CDB is just going to continue in this environment. Um, yeah, there's no reload. Ah, there we go. 
There we go. Um, properties. Uh, height one hundred. It's the only way to go. You you got you got to get that extra height. All right. Assemble, clear breakpoints, dump memory. Unassemble, view source line. Is that V? Okay. Compare, fill, stack trace. Yep. Show thread status. Log append, log open. Okay, so those are already kind of... You can do multi-process stuff. That's nice. Good morning. How are you doing today? We're just getting our debug environment set up. Um, um, can I not see the locals? Interesting. Huh. Hello, Greek content as always. Glad you're enjoying it. We're not going to fool around with this too long. I'm mainly trying to see if I have a good way of seeing, like, locals. But maybe I don't. Um... Okay, we're able to step. Wow. Fucking cool. That's really cool. Okay. Wow. Uh oh. Oh, don't look don't look up my ASLR addresses. <laughs> Leaked. Ah, uh, cover them up. Wow. Yeah, this is quite the experience. All right, so what we should be able to do is um, make der hw hello world uh, note. Uh, we'll 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 edit in here. We'll make a new text file. We're gonna save this in hello world hw. We're gonna call this hello world dot c. Includes standard lib.h, includes standard io.h, int main void return zero printf hello world new line. Ah? Ah? Bam! <laughs> there we go. Was I able to port uh, Rust to MIPS? No. Uh, it's, well, I, I mean, not Windows MIPS. LLVM literally doesn't support it. LLVM literally crashes. All right, there we go. Um, okay, so now what we want to do is a more complex program. So we can write C and chat. What do we want to do when we're writing C? Raise, raise your hand. What, what are your thoughts of uh, what we should do when we're writing C. Could you blow up the font? I, let's uh let's do this. Let's uh let's shut down. We're gonna change our resolution. <laughs> Make everything a void pointer. Restart. There we go. Okay. Boom. This. Uh. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Run. Okay. Now we want to. Yeah. There we go. Now we're talking. Oh yeah. Let's see if this works at this resolution. This will this will be a slight improvement. I think it's just gonna work. <laughs> uh, yep, time's fucked. That's fine. Okay. Font 
Large fonts. After the fonts have installed, what what is this going to do? Yes. Let let's try large fonts. <laughs> I've never done this before. I have no idea what this is gonna do. <laughs> Okay, I think that has finished. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, are these the large fonts? These are tastefully large. Yeah. They're they're bigger. They're not a, they're not crazy, but it it's bigger. It's a slight improvement. Yeah. Um, and then... Then the, the developer studio will be able to set an arbitrary large font in this. Oh, even this has taken effect. Wow. Even this has a larger font. I'm c Color me impressed. Color me impressed. Yeah, that's definitely a larger font. Tab size four. Yep, that's just correct. Um, options. Editor. I'd imagine it would have been under editor. Oh. Source windows, 15. <laughs> there, there you go. There's your extra big ass fries. <laughs> Too big. Chonk. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go and do some, uh, let's do some coding. Okay. So we're going to do, um... Uh, let's do virtual alloc. We should have a virtual alloc, right? So we should be able to use this and do a query. And I want to split this out. Yeah, here's what I want to do. Window, tile, horizontally. Oh my god. This is luxury. Hide. Uh, that's vertically. That's going to be probably too narrow. So we'll do horizontally. And we'll do docs up, code down. Okay, and can we build this? No. Can your VS code do that? No. Okay, virtual alloc. Uh, null, size of region, 4096, allocation type. Um, so what we want to do is we want to get an environment where we can just get arbitrary code running in here. Um, okay, mem commit and mem reserve. Uh, and then we'll do a uh, page read write void adder is equal to this. Uh, we might go do a slightly smaller font. Sorry, chat, but uh, yeah, this is just too big. We're gonna go to twelve. Okay, yeah, because that's eighty columns. So now we can fit eighty columns. Okay, uh, printf percent %p adder. Okay, and then we'll go start a command prompt. We'll go to hello world, cl hello world dot c. Oh, yep, that makes sense. Uh, include windows dot h. Uh, mm. Oh, we had this before. Um, this is, uh, date. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
fucking easy. Bam! Okay, that gave us an address. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, okay, well, let's see what kind of flags we have. Guard pages, no access, no cash. Commit, reserve. That's it. Okay, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, virtual Alec, virtual free. Looks good. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, the mouse. Oh, no, it's doing mouse. Oh, God. Ah. Uh, I don't know what I can do when that happens. Um, because I think, I think this is just fucked. Yeah. 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 Mmm. <sighs> yep. Yep. Um, okay. Okay. So. Um. That's fine. Um, basically, since this is a problem, we're gonna shut this down, and we're gonna start doing some dev on our Linux side, and then we're gonna try to do kind of minimal dev inside of this environment, because it's gonna suck. Right, we, we know that deving in this environment is gonna suck, and since we know that this is gonna suck in this environment, we're going to try to do it minimally. Alright. Okay, here we go. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some Rust running um in our mips environments so we're gonna build our stuff to run for uh mip 64 um and i think let's actually take a look see i think things are are running in 32-bit mode all right uh let's see CMD, let's go into debug, and we'll cdb uh, pstat.exe. Okay. Um, whoops. So, it would appear it is in 32-bit mode. Um... How would I verify that? Um, yeah, it's in 32-bit mode. So we're actually going to build MIPS32. Um, I don't know what uh, determines that mode, actually. I I'm really curious. Um, MIPS64R2 manual. What's this? MIP64, this is probably fine. This is for who? Uh, programmers? Uh, that's probably not gonna cut it. Uh, R1 through 5. Intro, instruction set, and, okay, privileged. So what I wanna see is what determines if it's in 32-bit mode. Um, do, 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 do. Um, MIPS, do to do, do programming model, I say, LSA, hmm. Well, 64-bit a thing? Uh, this is actually 64-bit MIPS. So, um, th this, this is 64-bit MIPS. So, Windows NT only ran on the, on 64-bit, uh, MIPS. Um, but I don't think it ran it in 64-bit MIPS. Um... So, yeah, we could even see, like, maybe if we can get uh, info on, hmm, what do we have here?
Um, P stat. So this is like process stat. Kind of fun. So it appears everything's running 32-bit. I don't know exactly how it works, but this is a 64-bit MIPS processor. Um, and I, I do think it does a little bit of 64-bit before running everything in 32-bit. I, I can't quite remember. There is no 64-bit mode. Install an old VNC server? I'd love to, but I, I don't think I'm going to be able to find a VNC server. Um, okay, well, we know it's in a 32-bit mode. Oh, Red Warhammer wants a plushie. Red Warhammer? You're going to be a Stingray today. You get to, you get to be a Stingray. All right. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is... Um, so, basically... What we want to do is we want to get our own Rust code running in this environment. We want to we want to basically improve this environment from writing in this shitty environment where we're really restricted to an old version of C. Um, honestly, it would be like relatively okay, but uh, we want to use Rust because Rust is Rust is very good. Um, and as part of that, uh, this is kind of a good example. Um, you're gonna have to use some imagination with me here. Um, but basically, this is a very common issue you come across when fuzzing. And this is what I consider like the harnessing stage. And this is basically trying to get an environment such that you can develop and run your fuzzer and do those things in a good environment. And for in, in this case, this is not a great environment to write a fuzzer. Obviously, we can write a fuzzer in this environment. We can we can make it happen, right? We can make it happen. However, it's not a great environment to do it. So what we want to do is we want to basically get our Rust running in this environment. It doesn't really matter what it is, but on a lot of targets, you don't even have the ability to get arbitrary code executing on it. So for a lot of things like embedded devices, you might not be able to even fuzz it without having a bug or some way to inject code into it, maybe a, a debug port, maybe you're using some weird CPU debugger that allows you to just bang in memory and then you can execute that. Um, or maybe you're lifting off flash and you're adding your shellcode to that flash. So we're going to pretend like this environment is a little bit more hostile than what it is. And we're going to pretend that we basically have to create our fuzzer in shellcode, right? Um, so basically the process that we're going to do today, uh, would work for writing a fuzzer in many different environments. We could write a fuzzer like this. We could actually use what we're doing today to fuzz a MIPS device on hardware. Like, literally on hardware, what we're doing today would allow us to rip the flash off of it, burn in, you know, find some unused flash, burn in our, our shell code, and bake it in. And that way we don't have to worry about how it's loaded, that, you know, does it take L's, does it take PE's, is it a flat binary image? What we're going to do is we're going to work today entirely in binary images. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert our um, we're going to convert our Rust program into some nice shell code, and then that shell code is going to allow us to just put it wherever we want. Um, so yeah, what is shell code? That's a that's a good question. I don't know what people would really define shell code as, but um, I think of shell code as basically the environment where you don't have a loader. You basically have just a string of bytes, string of code, string of data, whatever it is, and you're kind of injecting that into somewhere and you're then running it. Um, Shellcode is, is typically also part of like an exploit process. Um, it's basically, you just have raw bytes, right? You don't have an elf, you don't have a PE, you don't have an exe that you can double click and run you are in an environment where you're just kind of running raw bytes. You're interpreting data basically as code and running it. Um, a shellcode is a small piece of code used as the payload in the exploitation of a software vulnerability. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's an okay definition. Bytes that you can jump to, yeah, they're usually, uh, usually pre-made such that they can be relocated or they know where they're going to be located and such they will literally just... They'll just <laughs> run in, in wherever it is. You'll have hard-coded addresses and stuff. It's pretty common to hard-code addresses. Um, yep. 
You have an address space you can load into and an entry method. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, no relocations. Yeah, you probably want to use only relative offsets or you want to know where it's going to end up. Um, typically used for starting a shell in a tool uh, that isn't meant to start a shell. Yep. Okay. We got Manatee Appreciator. You're going to be a red blood cell. Just a, a good old-fashioned red blood cell. So shellcode is always CPU instructions? Um, yeah, I think typically that is the definition. Um, also give party dip? Wait, party dip got scammed? He got scammed yesterday too. Oh God, that's not good. Party dip got absolutely scammed. All right. Party dip, you're going to be a cherry pie. Okay. And then, uh, Benenki, you're going to be an ice cream cone. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um... Let's see, would a buffer overflow be shellcode? No, a buffer overflow would be the bug itself. Um, the uh, the shellcode would be what you maybe deliver in that buffer overflow, but the buffer overflow itself is just the vulnerability or the bug. Um, all right, uh, we had another plushie. Babaquan, you're gonna be a polar bear. You're gonna be a good polar bear. There we go. <laughs> Rebros, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Hell yeah. Glorious plushies. I got a maggot yesterday. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just get what you are. Taco plushie, best plushie. Taco is a pretty good plushie. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically build a, a small little program um, and we can do it with this MIPS test. We'll move this unknown nun to mipsl unknown nun.json. Uh, because we're actually gonna be doing mipsl, so 32-bit mips, little Indian. Uh, and then this is mips 32r2, I think. Mips 32r2. We'll do soft float, doesn't really matter. And then we'll do mipsl unknown nun. Max atomic width is 32 and 32. So I think that is now. Uh, and our data layout is fucked. Okay, um, actually, I think there might be a Mipsil unknown none already. Rusty print target list. I think there just is one. Yeah, there is. So since there's already a Mipsil target none, uh, we can build this. Uh, and anyone can do this. You don't need the special JSON. Z build standard core. Okay. So now, um, we can use this to build our, our program. Mipsil Sony PSP, hell yeah. Okay, so that's gonna be our build over there, and then this is our code. So we basically have created a program. And if we take a look at that program, we'll have um, target Mipsil debug Mips test. Okay, so here's our program. Um, it contains uh, two infinite loops. Yeah, that sounds about right. So, what we can do is we can look at basically how this is actually structured in the, um, how this is structured as an elf. So I think what we're gonna probably do is write a small, a small little elf loader, um, just such that we can make a, an in-memory representation of the binary. Only one infinite loop. Ah, look, ah, 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 yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's a jump forwards and, and then an infinite, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Um. so we're gonna look at um, read elf L. We're gonna try and look at the sections of this elf file to see how kind of Linux would actually go about loading this. So the only things that we care about 
when we're working with um when we're working with programming, the only thing that we care about, or when we're working with elves, we only care about these load sections. All this other stuff is like debug info, other other crap that doesn't matter. These load sections are the only sections that actually get loaded into memory, and thus these are the only sections that we care about. So what we want to do is basically go through all of these load sections and create the correct memory layout for this program. Now we can see in this case, the memory layout is actually pretty large. This program is actually pretty massive, um, which I don't really like. So let's try a release build. And the release build might get us a slightly better setup. And we'll just see. Bam, okay, that hasn't changed anything. Interesting what these load sections are, so... Huh. Okay. Hey, Mad Zero, Zero Fury, how are you doing? How are you? I'm doing pretty well. We're just starting to get into it. Uh, Cargo.toml. Let's go uh, profile release. Um, opt level is equal to Z. Okay, so Z is going to optimize this for size. So we don't really care about performance. We're going for maximum size. Asabood, thank you so much for the nine months. Hell yeah. Okay, and then what else do we have here that's a problem? So this is kind of telling me the different offsets in the... Um, uh, let's, let's get some data in here. I'm trying to think of the best way of doing this with data. Um, Vim source. Hmm. What's the best way for us to get some data? Let's just do an atomic uh, static moose is standard uh, core sync atomic atomic bool is equal to atomic bool uh, new false uh, use core sync atomic Atomic bool ordering. So I just want to have something that doesn't get optimized out here. Um, and an atomic is a great way to do that. Moose.store true ordering sequentially consistent. Okay, so um, let's see if that's done anything. Oops. Object dump D target MIPS release MIPS test. Um, really? I got optimized out. Uh, pub. Actually, if we no mangle this, there we go. Okay, so um, there we can see that we have a sync memory barrier, and then here we're uh, loading based on AT. So AT is pretty commonly used for uh, basically relative addressing in uh, MIPS programs. Um, that's going to be pointing to, let's see, where is that actually gonna be? Um, actually, are they loading, they're, are they setting it up themselves? I think they are, okay. Used, oh yeah, used also works. <laughs> Congrats, Kamosi, you're the first place viewer in software and game development. Woo! Okay, um, yep, and then we have a sync again, so there's the sequentially consistent. So this is constructing the address in AT. Uh, load immediate into that, and then it's storing a one. So basically, this is loading upper immediate, so this is loading a three, so this will be a three in this place. Um, so the address is going to be uh, hex three, this plus three hundred and seventy six, right? This is the this is the address that it's using uh, to store to. So we should actually have a data section now, um, and actually that might be a BSS, which is kind of kind of good. Um, yeah, and it looks like that's the case. So I am guessing. Uh, let's do let's Python this hex. Let's figure out what the address actually is. I think I can imagine that it's going to be uh, 30178. Yeah, and it is. Uh, and the reason that I knew what that was 
is because when I look at this load section, I see that it's loading. This memory is read writable. So this is the only place where it could possibly re be writing to memory. It's loading it to this physical address. The amount of bytes in the file. So this file size is basically the number of bytes that are initialized inside the file. And then there's the memory size, and the memory size tells you the actual size of that memory region. So I was able to guess that this is going to be 178 because I saw that there was one byte here because the mem size is one byte larger than the file size. There's one byte that is uninitialized and thus part of BSS, which means that it will get zeroed uh, upon loading the program. And thus, after all of that, uh, I can determine that basically that one extra byte is probably the atomic bool, and sure enough, it was, right? So it's writing to that atomic bool at 178, which is that zero initialized byte that's not initialized in the file, blah, blah, blah. Does that make sense? Um, so these are the sections that we have to load. So to, to basically create an identical in-memory representation of this program, we have to find the offset in the file. So this is the offset in the file. Then we have to load that memory from the file to this virtual address. Um, we can ignore the physical address. And then the size that we need to initialize from the file is this. And then the size of the memory region is this. So if we were to change that from an atomic bool to, let's say, an atomic U32, we'll find that we now will have four more bytes that are uninitialized. Um, so we'll initialize that to zero and then do this, build it. Um, and now we'll probably have, yep, now we have C bytes in mem size and only eight bytes for file size. So there's four bytes more that need to be initialized by the loader. Now, this is why we can't just directly load an elf up into memory because the elf is actually kind of a packed representation. We can see that there is a... We can see that these uh, these offsets in the file are loaded to wildly different addresses in the target program. Um, and there are regions of memory that need to be initialized that are not initialized from the file, right? So object copy can be used to basically uh, rip different sections out of a file, but I don't think you can create a full in-memory representation because I don't think object copy can create a BSS section, if I'm not mistaken. If there is a way to do it, I, I don't think I've ever found it. Um, so uh, what we want to do is basically flatten this into an in-memory image. So there's a couple ways that we can do this. One, we can write an elf loader. Two, we can write a Python script that runs read elf and then parses this output. <laughs> do you need a... Do you really need a flat memory representation? Uh, yes. I need a flat memory representation because I cannot load any of this into memory as is, right? None of this stuff is set up in memory in a way that I could load this as is. Doesn't Microsoft's POSIX implementation have an ELF loader? I have no idea. Maybe? Gotta concat everything into an image, yeah. Um, so, there's a couple ways that we can do that. We can use a linker script, uh, and linker scripts really sucked. I vote elf loader because it's an educational day. Okay? Anyone else? Anyone else? Any other votes? Do people want to load an elf? <laughs> elf loader, okay. Plus one, okay, everyone, okay, everyone wants an elf loader. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, okay. All right, uh, yeah. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna make a uh, cargo new bin elf loader. So elf loader, what's nice about elf loader is that it'll be written in Rust, and this should work on both Linux and Windows and OS X and anything that you can build Rust on. So this will be a great way for people to play around with these things. Um, yeah. So obviously, uh, we can use third-party libraries, but if you're new to the stream, you'll know that, um, or you won't know that we don't, we don't use third-party code here. Uh, third-party code is a sin. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our elf uh, from our MIPS test. Target MIPSL release MIPS test here. So now we have a test binary. And this is indeed an elf, 32-bit elf, MIPS 32R2, statically linked, not stripped. Okay. Isn't the Rust standard lib third-party code? Damn it, manatee appreciator! <laughs> okay, uh... Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna load that elf directly into memory because uh, it's gonna be faster that way. So we're gonna do, um, uh, how do we wanna do this? Struct elf, actually, we don't have to do that. Uh, we'll do backing buff reader uh, file. So this is a uh, reader for the backing elf file. Then we're gonna have uh, type result t, which is a standard result result t error. And we're gonna say this is a friendly wrapper around error. And then we'll have a derive debug, and this is gonna be a enum error. This is a error types. Okay, and then this is open a standard. IO error, uh, failed to open the elf file. Okay, and elf file representation. Okay, and then we'll impl elf, uh, load an elf from disk. Um, um, oh, and this is just a buff reader. Hmm. Uh yeah, let's try this. We're gonna we're gonna do some we're gonna do some stuff. Um pub fn. So this needs to be pub and this error type needs to be pub. And this is gonna be focused on readability and simple easiness and stuff. Um okay, so we're gonna do uh load file. Um path impl as ref path. So this can take something that can be interpreted as a path, and this is gonna res return an elf. Okay, and load an elf from memory. And loading an elf from memory is just a cool feature to have. It's kind of a flex. Um, and then this is gonna be bytes, impl as ref. So this keeps us honest and makes sure that we have a good implementation because um, being able to load an elf from memory is actually really fucking valuable, chat. It's really valuable. And what we're going to do here is, um, we're also going to say core. Um, yeah, so I think what we might do is we might, hmm. Um, if we have, if we basically make this so that we can load memory, then we have an elf loader that we could actually use, uh, in a shellcode environment, which is kind of fun. That's a cool feature to have. Um, okay. So, result elf, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Neither of these are returning the right thing. And now what we want to do is, uh, reader is equal to... Uh, buff reader new on file open path map error error open this. Okay. Um, use standard path path use standard IO. Uh, actually, use standard fs file. Those are the ones that we have here. Okay, and buff reader, not fun on the scope. Yeah, that's uh, that is standard io buff reader, and we'll also need read and probably seek at some point. Um, okay. So buff reader needs a generic argument, and what we're gonna do is say that a buff reader has a dynamic. Uh, thing that implements read. 
Is that sufficient? A box, dine, read. I think it also needs to implement seek. Okay. Uh, oh. Uh, okay, and now we can do okay. Elf this backing reader. Uh, and then this is box new. Uh, if we're using box, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, if we're using box, we're gonna need alloc, and yeah, we're just not gonna have the shell kit variant. Fuck it. Uh, this is just gonna be a file. It's just gonna be easier this way. We're just gonna get this done. Uh, we, this doesn't need to be the most bulletproof thing in the world. Um, okay, then we're gonna do um, uh, macro rules consume. If you've ever seen me write code, you'll know that I, I write this macro everywhere. Uh, please save transmute soon, Rust, please. That would be great. Um, okay, uh, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Um, we have a uh, reader, which is an expert. We have a type, and we have a field, which is an expert. Okay. Um, then we're gonna do uh, let mute temp is equal to OU8 uh, size of type. This is the unfortunate world of, of Rust. Create a buffer for type. Uh, then we'll do reader dot read exact mute temp dot map. Okay. Uh, this is the success case. In the success case, then we'll do uh, type from le bytes. Um, uh, temp, and then map error. Uh, x error consume and we had a problem consuming the field and that was the error okay uh read the bytes and convert if lvm was working we wouldn't need an l floater yeah exactly uh one out over buff read trait instead I could do that, couldn't I? Um. Yeah, I guess all these things are an IO, anyways. We're we're just we're just gonna do this. We're gonna do this because it doesn't have any dynamic allocations, which I I like a bit more. Uh, oops, consume. Okay, so now we have a way of consuming things, and then at the end here, we'll say, okay, elf backing reader. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we can do elf load file. This is going to return a result. Uh, we're going to load MIPS test. Let elf is equal to this. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. All right. That looks good. So then what we're going to do is uh, read the uh, 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 open the file. Well, I can't use transmute. It's unsafe. We don't have safe transmute yet. It's tragic. Um, transmute wouldn't wouldn't make sense in this case anyways. Okay, so then what we're going to do is, um, uh, let's see. So I can do a consume. Um, unfortunately, I also want consume bytes. So we're going to, we're going to do this consume bytes size expert. 
Um, can I, can I do this? Because they're different? Because one's an expert and one's a type? I think I can. I think I can do this. Um, I think I need a comma. Uh, what is it? How do you... It's not a semi, is it? Consume reader for... Um... Is that gonna work? Nice! Uh, failed to consume a, a field from the uh, input. Consume, we're gonna have a static stir, that's the name of the field, and then standard IO error is the error that we had when we failed to consume it. And then, uh, can't find a reader in this scope. Dollar, dollar. Okay. And then that needs to be mute. Perfect. Everything lines up. That seems pretty reasonable. Okay. Nice. So I can consume a U32, and that's a U32, uh, if I pull in size of. Uh, use standard mem size of. So we're going to write a quick little L floater here. And I think we're good. So if I do U8, and I say if this is not equal to... 7f elf. This is the uh, this is the magic. Uh, this is magic elf magic. Uh, check that this is an elf. So 7f elf is the magic that is used in elf files. So we'll do error error uh, missing magic. Okay, and then we'll do missing magic. Uh, elf magic. Uh, was missing from file. Okay, so then if I... T uh, bup, 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 bup. Oh, question mark on this. And just need to put an ampersand out front, and we should be good. This should build a JK lol. Ha ha ha. Um, what's going on here? No implementation for what? Oh, four. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Um, perfect. That looks good. So, um, that is... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that works. Uh, touch ASDF. So then if we try and load ASDF, this should, this should fail with an error of trying to consume the bytes. Um, yep. Yep. Elf ma failed to consume... Failed to fill whole buffer. Perfect. And then if I echo ASDF into ASDF, then this will m have missing magic. Fantastic. Writing an L floater for NT fuzzing. Yep. Yeah, we can't. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to, to have Rust generate a PE for MIPS. So, or more specifically, LLVM can't generate a PE for MIPS. So uh, we gotta we gotta do it ourselves. Okay. Um. All right. So missing magic. All right. So now we want to just look at the elf header. Um. And the elf header is pretty straightforward. So let's just take a look at what we have. So we have the magic seven f followed by e l f. Then we have um. Uh, we have one byte that determines whether it's uh, 32 or 64 bit. Okay, so let's do that. Um, bitness is equal to consume reader uh, u8 bitness. Okay, so now we can get the bitness from it. Fantastic uh, MIPS test. So that should be. Um, I'm going to move this to here. And I'm going to move this to here. 
And we're going to move that to there. And then these to here. Okay, I like this setup better. Um, okay, bitness. Yep, so uh, 1 or 2 for 32 or 64 bits. So we'll do uh, enum bitness uh, bits 32, bits 64. So 32 bits uh, elf, 64 bit elf, uh, bitnesses for elf files. Uh, Repper, uh, derive, debug, okay, and then, uh, we can impl, we'll move this up, boom, we'll just write this as fast as we can, impl from, uh, u8 for bitness, uh, try from, uh, type error is an error, and then we'll do fn try from val u8 into, uh, result bitness, uh, self, match val and then we'll have a self um uh one is uh uh we'll just have this be okay yeah one will be bitness bits 32 two will be bitness bits 64 and then we'll have a uh, everything else is going to be a return error. Error, uh, invalid bitness. And then we'll include the original value in with that. Okay. Invalid bitness u8. Um, elf indicated a bitness, which was not a valid variant. Fantastic. So now we should be able to print this. Nice. Uh, oh. Um, bitness try from. And put another question mark on that. There we go. Bits 32. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so now we know the bitness. And then we have the biddle and uh, little and big Indianess. So we want to do the same thing. Uh, here. So this is going to be endianness. Okay. A little Indian. Pretty straightforward. Big Indian. Big Indianness. Okay. Indianness. Uh, big, little, invalid Indianness. Okay, invalid Indianness. And Indianness, Indianness. Wow, we are slaying it. Okay. Indianness. Okay, and there we go. One or two for little or big. Yep. 32 bit little Indian. Okay, fantastic. Um. Okay, and then this is going to then take um, endian match endian God, Rust is such a fucking good language. Uh, big. Fantastic. Okay, and then we're going to have one of these bad boys. Uh, uh, consume a U8. Uh, consume bytes from a reader. Okay. 
Uh, this is just going to be U81. And then we're going to do... Uh, I'm okay with this. Pink. Pink. Uh, temp. Okay, so now we have a couple different uh, readers. So these can only read U8s. If we don't specify an endianness, we can only read U8s. Okay, and that makes sense. That's exactly what we want. Fuck yeah. Uh, Oh, and then we'll do x temp zero. Beautiful. Okay, so this has kind of like the the way that we've architected this has made it such that we cannot. Um, the way that we've architected this is we cannot read things without specifying the bitness that has been interpreted from the file, right? So elves are very strange. Um, the only reason I'm doing this is because I know I know what's coming ahead, but basically for elves, you end up reading these these multibyte fields, um, and the endianness is determined. So basically, this endian thing, all of these things that are endianness agnostic, are one byte, right? So what I've done is I've designed this such that I can read individual bytes at a time, no problem without specifying endianness, because endianness does not affect. Um, it doesn't affect a single byte. You have to have multiple bytes. But from this point on, once you have read this, uh, it affects the interpretation of multibyte fields starting at offset 10 hex. And offset 10 hex is immediately like the type of the elf and all of this sort of stuff, right? So immediately we have to start handling these things based on the endianness that, uh, of what we have. And the bitnesses affect the size of these fields. So Things can get really messy, so it's really important that we kind of uh, we kind of get that set up correctly from the start. Okay, does that make sense? Does that makes sense. Okay, now uh, we read that the Indianness. Then we're gonna read the elf version. Let version is equal to consume reader version. Um. Okay, and we'll say if the version, if version is not equal to one, return error, error, unknown version, uh, version, and then this is uh, unknown version u8, and this is elf version was unknown. Okay, so we only handle elf version one. Uh, we're gonna make this parser really strict. We have the uh, ABI, we don't care. So this is the let ABI is consume reader ABI. So we don't care. Um, ABI version, once again, we also don't care. Okay, and I'm gonna reformat this as well. Uh, Get the bitness and endianness. And this is uh, make sure the elf version matches. Uh, we don't care about the ABI. Okay. And then we have uh, some padding bytes. Okay. Let pad is equal to consume reader. Uh, seven bytes padding. Beautiful. So we've read all the way up to this point, and now we have the type of the, the object file. Um, and honestly, I don't think we care. <laughs> um, I don't think we care. Um, let obj type. Like, yeah, we could check that it's an executable, I guess. Um... I don't know. Yeah, let's just, we can do that. Uh, consume reader, and now we're going to consume a U16. And since we're consuming a U16, we need to specify the endianness 
Um, and then this is the uh, type. Okay. So uh, we should be able to print this out. And we can say if object type is not equal to two, um, we'll just define this somewhere. Uh, I really don't want to break these out into enums. I'm just not, I'm just not going to do that uh, because this is quick and dirty. Const this is a u16 and it's equal to two. Okay, uh, executable elf format. Executable. Okay, um, if this is not equal to et exec, uh, return error, error, expected, executable, and then object type. Okay, make sure this is an executable. And then we're also going to say, uh, what, en is going to be endianness, and bt is going to be bitness. Um, just because this is going to get gross. Okay. Expected executable U8. Expected an executable, but got a different elf type. Okay, so this is only for executables. And we can relax, relax this uh, as needed. Oh, and that's a U16. 162, bitness and endianness we don't need. Okay, there we go. And indeed, that is an executable. And let's take a look. Let's see if our endianness stuff works. So in this terminal, um, so we're going to go to MIPS test. And we're just going to build a couple of these. Um, Cargo build target AR64 unknown none. Uh, Z build standard core. So we'll have an AR64. Um, we'll do a big Indian file as well. So this is 64 bit. So we're going to test 64 bit. And then we'll also do like PP, PPC uh, cargo uh, rust up target list. Uh, above, 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 rusty print target list. Vim big. Oh, grep big. Be. Hey, that that looks good. Um, unknown Linux GNU. Okay, so we'll take. Um, MIPS test. This is MIPS 32 LE. Uh, cargo.toml. Panic is abort. Cargo clean. Uh, I don't know if targets ARC. Do I need EH personality? I don't think so. If I'm doing panic abort. Oh, I'm. I see. I'm not building a release. So we'll copy from MIPS test target release uh, Eric 64 big Indian release. Aww. Aww. Okay. Uh, let's just do MIPS Hmm. Mips unknown. Uh. None. Really? Really? Mips. Wow. There's none of the. Ugh. Trying to trying to find the best big Indian thing to build. MIPS unknown Linux. Uh, let's just do muscle. 
We're just trying to get a big Indian binary. Um, MIPS. Unknown Linux. Oh, come on. <sighs> MIPS PSP. Yeah. Uh, let's just see what let's see what there are for non options. I, I don't want to make a target spec. We can always make a target spec, but I really don't want to do it. God, all these are gonna be Oh, Army B. That's big ending. <laughs> there we go. We got one. We just need none EABI, otherwise it's going to try and link against a libc, and we don't have a libc. We don't have a build environment for these things. There we go. There we go. So, uh, arm that release MIPS test, and we'll copy it to arm EB. Yeah, and it's a MSB most significant bit, so that is a 64-bit, or a 32-bit big endian. Um, okay, so what we want to do is we want to be able to load both MIPS test or ARM EB and we want to load uh, MIPS 32 LE. So both of these should hopefully go just fine. And they do. Yeah, and if the this Indianness definitely mattered because um, if we didn't uh, have that Indianness take effect, one of these would parse incorrectly. So if we change this to LE byte, so we accidentally we're only Ellie bytes. Unexpected executable 512, because that's actually a big Indian field. So we've kind of architected in this in a way that we have a lower chance of, of making a making a mistake. What's this consume? Uh what's this? Hmm. This is interesting. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I, I like that. That's pretty clean. And you just have to, yeah, you just have to implement it for those types, and yeah. I don't know. I think that's kind of the better, stronger type thing, but this one is just so much easier to just write out every time. Because I, I write this out in every fucking program. Mainly, I'm trying to hold over until we get uh, safe transmute. I don't really want to commit to it too much. Then we have machine. Uh, consume reader u16 en machine. Once again, we don't care. Then we have an another elf version. Reader uh, u6 u32 en. Elf version. I don't know why there's another field. We're not going to check it. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Then we have these fields. We have the entry point. The entry point is very important. So, this is the first thing that we actually care about. Let entry is equal to consume reader um... BT EN uh, entry point. Um, how would I match on this? How do I make this be a macro? Um, I guess, is BT an identifier? I think that's an identifier, is it? Non-constant value, not a type. Oh, we only have a type variant. Okay, we're good, 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 chat, we're good. Um... Bitness, 
Expert. Um. Um. Ba 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 ba. Um, how do I do this? Ah, this. We macro and macro. Um, bitness, uh, bits 32. Consume, um, reader, U32, Endian, field. Ah, there we go. Dude, Rust macros are so fucking good. So fucking good. Um. Oh, can I not? No, can I not do that? Oh, Rust macros are the worst things ever. Non constant value. Hmm. 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 Um. Uh, I don't. The problem is, I don't think it knows which one it can match on. Dynamic typing in Rust, yep. Yep. Um. Macros are over o overused. That's probably fair. Hmm. At least it's not C++ templates. Yeah. Shit. What do I do about this? Am I just doing it wrong? Hmm. Do they have to have different tokens? Like different separators? Um, non constant value. Yeah. I, I think you can't do that? Question mark? Question mark? We'll just do this. Uh, ba -ba 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 macro rules. Consume native. Bam. Uh, oh yeah, they do have incompatible types, don't they? Um, yep. Welcome to fucking elves. Elves have a lot of this dynamic shit, and it's dumb. I hate it. Okay. All right, so we promote everything to U64s. There we go. Um, okay, so this should give me the entry point. All right, one enters at zero. Okay, uh, that's the arm, armib. Uh, read elf L. Yep, that's correct. Entry point is zero. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, that gets the entry points. 
Then we need the program header table offset. Uh, ph off. Consume native uh, reader bt in uh, program header offset. All right? Yep, four and eight. Bam. And then we got a section header offset. And you know what we think about section headers? Fuck them. Fuck them. Sections are stupid. Uh, flags. I don't know. Flags. Don't really care. Reader U32 in flags. That's good. Uh, the header size. Okay. EH size. Um, elf header size. <laughs> Won't support 128-bit elves. They don't exist. Uh, program header, program header table entry. Fent. Uh, program header entry size. And then program header entries. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's all we need. We can uh, ignore the rest. Okay, so we should have a uh, program header offset. Actually, these are... All we care about are program headers. These are the sections that can be load sections. Okay, 34 hex is the offset. So what we'll do is um, reader.seek, seek from start, pahoff. Um, map error... Seek. Uh, seek to the program headers. We're almost done. Standard IO error. Uh, seeking to the program headers failed. Program headers seek. Program headers. No! What's the benefit of using a macro here? Um, uh, it mainly allows us to just change this typing without having a bunch of traits and, and shit. Okay, so then we seek to the program headers. Um, Project safe transmute last commute. Oh, oh, Jesus. I think they bit off too much. I think they're making it way too complex. Okay, here's program headers. Okay, so for blah in zero dot ph count, number of program headers, ph. Okay, so this will print program headers. Okay, nice. Uh, and then we'll put a, a new line between our two binaries. All right, so we have a big Indian and a little Indian thing, and then, uh, yeah, pt load. Uh, const this u16 is equal to one uh, load id section. I guess I shouldn't call that a section. Loaded segment. Okay, and then all we have to do is consume this. Uh, let type is equal to consume uh, reader. U32 in uh, ph type. Um, let flags consume reader U32 in ph flags. Oh, that's only for 64 bit. Yep. Um, 
Yep. Sick. Really nice. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if let uh, if matches, uh, bitness, bitness, bit sixty four. Uh, if it is, uh, bit 64, consume that, ph flags, so we consume them only for 64 bit, <laughs> really cool, uh, macros allow you to implement the equivalent of overloads, yeah, I, I think that's kind of why I use them in, in a, in a context like this, offset virtual address, everything else is the same except these flags, okay. Perfect. Um, so these are 64-bit uh, has flags here. Let offsets consume read uh, consume native reader btn ph offset native 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 na uh, one two three four five. One, two, three, four, five. Offset, virtual address. Physical address. Uh, file size. Mem size. Vatter, patter, file size, mem size. So the mem size is the in-memory uh, loaded size that we need to basically we need to take the file size and we need to zero pad it until it is equal to mem size maybe zero maybe zero um, segment dependent flags okay so 32 bit has flags here uh, and the reason that they changed the position of these flags is just due to alignment so this will be let flags mute uh, flags is that and then here we don't have an else Flags is equal to this. Okay, at which point the flags have been parsed. Um, and then p align. Let align is equal to this. Okay. So, um, this should be correctly reading the header. And what we should be able to do is print... Uh, let's print the, we'll print the virtual address that we want to load to, the file size, and the mem size. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say if flags and, oh, if type and pt load is not equal to zero, then this is a load section. And then we'll do uh, O10. Uh, PT load. U32. Okay, there we go. So these are all the load sections. Um, maybe. Doesn't seem right. Are you going to implement relocations? No, relocations are pointless. Um... Uh, read elf l mips. Okay. We've got three load sections here. We're reporting those three, and then we have these. What, what are these? Am I doing it wrong? Type is 32. Flags is 32. These are five native consumes. One, two, three, four, five native consumes. We have flags on 32 only here. Um, and then alignment is a native. Okay. Had to write a dynamic loader. Yeah, it's not fun. Okay. Um. 
So what's going on here? Oh, are these loaded sections? Oh, um, these are not flags. Whew. <sighs> okay. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there's our three load sections. And then we have one load section here. There we go. So, um, that is correct. So now what we can do is we can also add in one more print, O10OX, and this is going to be the, uh, me, uh, the offset. Yeah, so this is the offset in the file, and if we do a read off of our binary, we'll see that all of our information should match. So we have a, a 1000, a 20148, a 30170. Um, yep, that looks great. Everything looks fine. P feels uh, like it's an easier format. It is. It's a lot. It's a lot better for relocations. Elves have like architecture specific relocations that make it very, very difficult. Um, P's do as well, but they, they don't use them nearly as heavily. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's find... Um, let's build a 64-bit one as well. Because we don't have a 64-bit binary. So we'll copy from... MIPS test x86 64 x86 64 bam okay so now we're gonna have an x86 64 okay so now we're we've got pretty good tests all right there we go expected executable that makes sense so these executables for 64 bit are marked um i was kind of expecting this these are marked as when they're static pi when you have static pi they're actually they show up as a uh, dynamic libraries uh, i think they're et dines yeah they are welcome to how it is so i think i might just ignore the type i'm just gonna ignore the type because it, it doesn't matter I, I just don't care i just don't give a shit Okay, there we go. So this is a 64-bit one. So now we can read elf L on uh, this 64-bit thing. And hopefully this lines up as well. We'll have to do this. Uh, what's the best way to do this? Here we go. Okay, we should have two load sections. Uh, offset 0, address 0, 1D5 for 1D5. 1d8, 1, 1d8, AO and AO. Okay, looks great. Okay, so this is working for both 32 and 64 bit and big and little Indian. With 64 bit P's, uh, uh, relocations are nearly non existent. Yeah. Okay, so this is good. We now have all of the metadata that we need. So uh, we could accumulate this into a. Thing, or we could seek and seek back. What do we want to do here? Um, seek. Uh, what does it return? Returns the new position. So I'd have to do a uh, stream position. Okay. Um... Save the current position. Let stream pos is equal to uh, b -b 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 reader stream position. Uh, map error error um, section seek or this is a uh, load seek. Uh, load seek, seeking to, uh, initialized data for a 
loaded segment failed. Okay, we're almost there. Almost there. Almost done, chat. Okay, um, if file size is greater than zero, save the current position. Okay, um, read uh, initialized bytes from file if needed. Okay, uh, let's bytes is vec new. Okay, and then I'll do, um, uh, yeah. Bytes resize, uh, OU8 for, um, file size. Yep, I always get this ordering on. Oh, you eight. Okay, and then that's expecting a U size, so we have to do a try into map uh, error. Error. Um, integer truncation. Boop. 221. We're going to make this work on 32 bit. Um,. Or more specifically, we're going to make this fail correctly. Okay, uh, truncated integer um, for uh, file size. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a little verbose, but I like it. Okay, so this is uh, read uh, resize. Buffer, and then this is um, read initialized bytes from file. So we need to seek reader.seek, seek from start uh, off set. Um, seek to the bytes in the file. Bam, read the initialized bytes. So here we'll do uh, reader.read exact mute bytes. Map error, error. Read, uh, read init. I don't know. Uh, something like that. Okay. Uh, read in it. Reading initialized bytes from file failed. Uh, yep, yep. Yep. Okay, and then we can. Okay, and then uh, seek back to where we were. Um. Stream pass. Okay, so then we seek back. And if we don't do this seekage, this should fail. Yeah, it just fails. Makes sense. Um, so seeking back, and it correctly picks up where it is. So we save the position, we seek to where we want, we resize the buffer, we read the initialized bytes, uh, and then Bob's your uncle. Okay, and now what we can do is bytes.resize file size, try into, uh, this is mem size, try into map error error integer truncation mem size ou8 and then this is a uh, pad out with zeros until memory size how did it go with rust yesterday uh not great lvm doesn't work so there's nothing we can do we kind of we kind of got hosed So we're doing a workaround right now. And, and the workaround's gonna work because we have control. Okay, uh, pad it out. So then the bytes, we resize that to the mem size. Um, and that's the actual in-memory size has been resized um, to that. Okay. 
us, and then we know that that bytes line, so that will either truncate it or do whatever. Then we have a virtual address, and uh, that's all that matters. So, um, okay, let mute load is vec new, uh, list of sections to load, um, go through each program header entry, uh, parse program header, get header type, uh, we don't care about alignments, okay, so then we have pt load, Uh, and then here we'll do uh, load.push virtual address bytes. Okay, save the uh, address to load to and the bytes. Okay, so there we go. We now have uh, we now have that parsing everything out, and then we can make a in memory representation, I guess. Um, so what we're gonna do is load sort by um, key uh, sort load sections by key, or by uh, virtual address. Okay, so we we know the lowest address now because they can be they can be out of order and they also can overlap, so uh, we'll catch overlap as well here, um, and now we should be able to print these. Yep, so we can see the sections and then the contents for their sections, including anything that needs to be zeroed out. So we have the address that they're loaded at. Yep, the address that they're loaded at. We have the section, all that good stuff. So this now is basically what your loader is going to do, except we don't handle relocations or any of that sort of stuff. Um, but that's fine. That's on you. Don't do relocations. Um, okay. So I think we're good. So now what we need to do is... I guess... I don't know. We don't even need this elf thing. It's going to be uh, load... Uh, this is going to return u64, u64, and a vec u8. Oh, no. Okay, this. And then we have a load file. Bam. Result. Okay, so what this is going to return is an OK. It's going to return the entry. The load... Um, zero dot zero, the lowest address that is loaded to, and the uh loaded, the loaded representation. Uh, let mute loaded is vec new. This is the uh, flat in memory loaded rep representation. Okay, so um. And this is uh, returns entry virtual address uh, lowest. Um, this is a base address for flat map and then flat map contents. Okay. What are we working on? We're working on an elf loader that's going to convert an elf into its in-memory representation such that we can write Rust for uh, MIPS on Windows. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a process. This is just a really good tool to have around. This is just nice, nice to work with, nice to have. Um, oh yeah, is there like relocation stuff that we can detect? I would like to tell you no, I would have to parse the relocation table, I think. I don't think there's a quick way to see. Okay, whatever. Okay, so then we have flat in-memory loaded representation. Did yesterday's attempt succeed? Nope, LLVM doesn't work. LLVM literally prohibited us from, from doing what we wanted to do. So, it's kind of a shame. 
Okay, so now what we want to do is let mute cura adder is equal to uh, load dot get zero dot unwrap uh, map uh, okay or I think that returns an option in which case this is going to be okay or error um, no load segments. Okay, get the uh, lowest address loaded. Okay, this is the lowest address. Okay, uh, no load segments. Uh, the elf didn't supply any sections, segments to load. Twitch decided that my chat shouldn't work anymore? Yikes. Yikes. Just, uh, just F, F5 the page. It'll be fine. Um, and then this is load.get, okay, or, uh, and then dot zero. Okay. Um... There we go. Did F5 the page and not a rip. Okay. Uh, let mute cur address is equal to lowest address. Uh, load everything. Okay. Uh, for adder, we'll say virtual address bytes in uh, load. Then we're gonna do loaded. Um, let offset is equal to vadder minus cur adder. Okay. Uh, get the offset from where we are. Okay, offset vadder minus cur address. Then we'll do uh, loaded dot resize. Um, um, is there a, uh, hmm, loaded.len plus offset cur adder. Oh, sorry, O U eight. Okay, and then this is resize loaded representation until our, uh, our pad out. Pad out loaded uh, representation until our current, uh, until uh, vatter, right? So we get the length of loaded and we get the dis the distance. So the first one, we should get vatter minus vatter, which is zero. So we take the length, which is zero, we add zero and do nothing. But for certain sections, they might have like a gap between them. So this should uh, zero out the gaps. Now, um, uh, place in the bytes, loaded dot extend from slice bytes. Okay, and there we go, that's done. That's just done. Uh, and then we'll do uh, cur adder is equal to vatter plus bytes.len update current address. Okay. Um. Uh, offset. Try into map error error integer truncation vatter uh also okay um that we don't have. Okay, so all of these things. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, integer truncation offset. Um, uh, truncated integer for offset. Uh, question mark. Add. What? Um. What? Oh, okay. Here's that. Sweet. Okay. Um. Uh, what could an advice be to be good at coding? You just got to practice a lot. Write a lot of code. Find find ways to turn random things that you do in your life into coding projects. If you're playing a video game or something, maybe try and write a bot for it. Maybe try to write AI for it. Maybe write a, a, a solver for your character stats or simulation stuff for your gear rotation, your item, uh, your skill rotation, like stuff like that. Um, there's so many ways to turn everything into a programming project uh, and find a way to enjoy it and love it and find a way to make time for it. Um, okay, uh, so this is pretty good. Uh, where do we do math? So these are the only places we do math. Um... Checked sub. Um, map error. Uh, error. Section overlap. Okay. Uh, section overlap. Um, multiple sections overlap where they are loaded okay that's what can happen here basically if we subtract that off and there's not a gap then we know that there's a problem because this jutted past the next section so that allows us to catch section overlaps is that not cool uh okay or there we go Oh, welcome back, Zeno Blano. Um, and check that. This, okay, or error, integer overflow, uh, loaded. Um, hmm, yeah, loaded. And then this is, uh, checked at this, okay, or error integer overflow, uh, current address. Okay, there should now be no bugs in this. Like, actually no fucking bugs. Okay, uh, integer overflow loaded. Integer overflow when computing a uh, loaded um, offset, uh, loaded size. Uh, loaded size, bink, 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 bink. Okay, uh, integer overflow uh, when computing uh, current address. BAM! BAM! BAM 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 Oh, we are really smart, chat. What else? Flags aren't used? Okay, that's fine. Uh, two of five. Fes size. Facount. No, we use facount. We don't use for size. Mm -hmm. Bink, bink. Okay, 306. Boop. 
Uh, adder. Or entry. Adder. Payload. Woo! Okay. Um, okay. Vim? Yeah, this is Vim. Fuck yeah, chat. Uh, X. X. Uh, entry adder payload Dolan. Entry, the lowest load address, and then the size. So this is the size of the in-memory representation of this binary. Okay. So now we have a way of developing stuff. Uh, so we're gonna make a, a we're gonna make a we're gonna make a new file format. Okay, is everyone ready? Let mute output is equal to uh, buff writer new file create. Uh, let args is vec new. Uh, no, this is a standard env args collect into a vec. If args.len is not equal to three uh, prints line um, invalid uh, usage, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, elf loader. Um, input elf, output felf, okay, uh, return, okay. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, we're so smart. Um, uh, okay. Uh, load the elf, uh, create the output file. Uh, buff writer and write. <laughs> Volk elf. <laughs> uh, map error error creates felf. Okay, uh, create felf, uh, creating the felf failed. Uh, 316, uh, ref. Sweet. Output dot right, all, uh, b felf. Uh, map error error right felt. Um, uh, writing the felt failed. Okay. Uh, nips. Uh, output dot felt. Oh, that's a good looking felf. That, that, that's a felf if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Output right all. Uh, adder dot. Uh, entry dot. Uh, two le bytes. Dot map error, error, right. Felf. Uh huh, and then uh, adder. Mm hmm. And then, um, uh, payload. Output dot flush, map error, error, right felf. Okay.
There we go. That has created a filth. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. So now we have a filth. <laughs> uh, it's a very, very complex file format. You read this address, you then read until end of file, and then you load that at that address, um, and then uh, you jump to this address. Uh-huh. We, we could give it a version number. This is, this is felf1. This is very specifically a felf1. This is a, a felf1 file. That way these 64-byte things are 64-byte uh, aligned. Or 64-bit aligned. Just gonna map it as R to the X? Yeah! Yeah! Why not? <laughs> what? What? Uh, the permissions? Permissions? Schmirschmissions. Filthy tool at a payload size? Should I have a payload size? You can infer it from the length, but it's kind of hard to say. Will this be something like syscall? I don't know what this is going to be. <laughs> We've got no idea where we're going to put this. Is felf a thing or did you make it up? I made it up. It's a full elf. <laughs> it's a felf. <laughs> um... Hmm. Hmm. I, I think I'm really happy with this. This is a good filth. This is a good filth. Okay. So, um, yeah. So now what we need to do is we need to, um... Uh... Can you cargo install things? How do how do you do that? How do, how do I make this so I can cargo install it? Cargo install path dot. Oh, yeah, you're totally right. I didn't see the dot. I thought that was the target. So now elf loader should be in my path. <laughs> yeah! Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. That's so cool. I've never I've never thought of to do that and I am kind of glad that I do that now. Okay. Desu doesn't like my format file? Go to start padding. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What what Oh, does cargo install build it release as well? Yes, it does. Okay, that makes sense. Nice, installed package elf loader. Okay, okay. All right. I'll make a com file out of an elf. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, you're memeing. You're memeing. You're memeing. I thought you were serious for a second. Um, there's really no shortcuts that we can take for what we just did, unfortunately. I, I know that sounds stupid, um, but unfortunately... There's not a very good way to load, um, there's not a very good way to load things. <laughs> um, you can object copy just the text section, but then you have to be very, 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 very careful that you don't end up breaking anything. Um, you can use a linker script, and honestly a linker script would have been okay here, but linker scripts are really gross. Linker scripts are fail open, so if you don't specify a section in your linker script, you'll just not omit it. So you'll end up with a situation where you'll just end up 
ha like maybe for example you don't expect ro data and ro data ends up getting generated for a jump table and you just use your linker script you'll get no warnings you'll get no errors the linker script won't be like what the hell is this ro data thing you didn't tell me what to do with this it just won't put it in the fucking file so then your program just will be missing a section it's disgusting <laughs> So this is, this is seriously, this is seriously the approach that I take when I need to make binary loaders. I've written this same program a billion times. Oh, RNI call, thank you so much for the 86. Hell yeah. How is your stream? Shellcode generation can be a pain. Yep, and this completely solves that problem. Um, <laughs> welcome everyone. What were you up to? Thanks for all the follows. Hell yeah. We, uh, you know what? You, you raiders are luckier than my chat because my chat just dealt with three hours of writing basically uh, an elf loader. Um, and now we get to actually use the elf loader to do things. <laughs> nickel rhymes with pickle. Oh, nickel. Okay. <laughs> Working on the next Dogecoin core release? No way. Hell yeah. Is it is it is it written in Rust? Cuz I cuz I kind of kind of hope that it's written in Rust. Cuz if it's not written in Rust, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> uh, but you need to build an NTP to run code in the end. Yeah. Okay. Um All right. So, cargo run. Oh, cargo build this um okay uh yeah we're building mips mipsel unknown none uh we'll make a make file so we're gonna have we're gonna build the project and then we're going to uh elf loader um target release Mips, oh, target Mipsel unknown none release Mips test um, out dot filth. Okay, so now we should have, yep, this is the output binary. So this is like the, the, the loaded size minus, I guess, 8 plus 8 plus 8, which is 24. So if you subtract 24 from that, that's the loaded size. Um... <laughs> so here's the real problem now that file size is massive and chat do you know why that file size is massive uh config.toml it is because uh cargo config toml it's because we're not uh, we have like disgusting section alignment and padding and, and all sorts of things that we just don't care about. So what we're going to do is uh, build build target is equal to um, we're going to simplify this make file a lot. Target is this. Um, Rust flags is equal to this. Okay. Um, and I think that there's a way to specify, if I'm not mistaken, I think there is a way to specify the... Um, how do I set uh, build standard? Build standard cargo config. I think there's a way to do it. This is like computer archaeology? Hell yeah. Yep, we're going to write a small little program to load this. Um, does anyone know? Is there a way? Let's, let's just see if I can do uh, build standard is equal to core. Unstable. I was just going to guess. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. So I legitimately didn't mean to do that. Um... Okay. 
make file. Okay, so now we just need cargo build release. Um, cargo build release, done. Make uh, cargo clean. Make, let's just gonna make sure that everything is working exactly as we expect. But I think it is. <laughs> okay, we did it. All right, we got we have our felf. Now what we want to do is we want to set linker flags. Um, let's see. Um, target triple dot links. Build script overlay. Uh, link search. Hmm. I always do Rust C flags, and I might just do that. Target mipsol unknown none. Uh, Rust flags is equal to um, C link arg is moose. Okay, so this should fail now. Uh. That explains the Indiana Jones hat for the computer archaeology. Okay, there we go. Got GC sections, that sort of stuff. So we're invoking this flavor GNU. Where is Rust LLD help? I think this is what it's actually invoking, so I think we're fine. Um, Vim dash section uh, uh, align. And magic. I think that's the one. I think that's literally the one. And magic. Do not uh, do not page align sections. Come on. You need a whip. <laughs> project. I, I should add the project command. Oh, there we go. There's our filth. Yes. <laughs> Fucking pog champ. 88 bytes. 88 bytes. So that that's our program. <laughs> that is our entire program. I told you I just needed N magic. <laughs> Inspiring Bob, welcome to the chat. Hell yeah. Don't don't forget to hit the follow button and and follow if you enjoy the content. <laughs> okay, uh all right. So yeah, it's just cargo build, build uh, release. <laughs> That's it. That's all you need to do, and you're and you're building, and then make, and then that makes it into a felf, and then the actual size of this binary is eighty-eight minus twenty-four. Right? Eighty-eight minus twenty-four. Yeah, it's sixty-four bytes. Um, there you go. All right. <laughs> Chat doubted me. They fucking doubted me. Yeah, I, I don't even know, um, target mipsol release mips test. I feel like I use readelf interchangeably. So the reason this is so big is probably because these have a, uh, these are probably 8-byte aligned. Yeah, it looks like they're 8-byte aligned. But yeah, if we look, uh, vert adder F8, 128, 130. Um, so let's see if we can load this. <laughs> Do I have Binja open already somewhere? Yes. Um, okay, so we're going to load a felf. Um, mips test out.felf uh, base address okay so this is mips32 mips mips mipsol32 um, I can set the address xxd out.felf so we know that the entry point is uh, 10128 Okay, uh, the base address is 
Um, this. 100F8. And then, can I skip some of my stuff? Can I skip some stuff? Hmm. 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 Data offset. There. Mm, okay. Uh, data offset. Uh, is 24, right? 888, eight, eight, that's 24. Uh, and then that size is 64. And we'll say it's RWX. Start. Okay. Okay, uh, what's going on here? Um... What? Did, did I did I typo it? Did I do it wrong? One 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 oh one twenty eight. Ah. This is the entry point. Uh, make a yeah. What? Uh, wild true. Nop. Okay. Looks pretty good. Uh, linear disassembly. Let's look at disassembly. Yep, there we go. Yeah, that's our program. It's just an infinite loop. Looks pretty good. <sighs> uh, to parse else, I do something like that. What's this? This is gross. That's gross. That's so much code. And there's unsafe in here. Why are you using unsafe? Wait, is this my code? This looks like code that I've written in the past. Um. <laughs> All right. But there we go. And there's the knob. Yeah. Infinite loop. I don't know. I think we messed up the start, but that's, that's okay. Um. All right. Is not a delay slot? Yeah, that's a delay slot. Okay, so we need to write a fell floater. All right, who's ready to write a fell floater? Um, my cursor is not okay. There we go. I think we're good now. All right. Um, let's uh, let's write a fell floater. Now the question is, do we, oh, chat, chat, chat. I don't think we're gonna write just a fell floater. I don't think this is just a fell floater. This might be. <laughs> ah, this might be a remote fell floater. He wants a remote fell loader. <laughs> What's uh yeah, mm hmm What's this down here? What's this? Is this notes? Add annotations. Okay. Uh, what's my fastest way of searching through here? I think index is best. Uh, um, does it tell me which one to use? Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, just give me the example. Oh, fuck yeah. No, we're gonna use 2.0. I think I think we have 2.0 actually. Damn it! I didn't mean to hit escape there. It's a tragedy.
Oh. That, that's classic. Yeah, it just, it's just a, the time is just bad. That's pretty standard stuff. You just have to set the time correctly if you want to compile things. Um, okay, perfect. Oh, whoa. Whoa, what is it called? What is it called? What is it called? Um... Two point Is it like WS one one thirty two? Let's try WS one What the fuck is it? <laughs> Does anyone know? Oh, I could find. I could I could find it. Uh I just want to explore. Uh lib win w suck. 32.lib Okay, let's see if that succeeds Um, what does it return zero if successful if this is uh, not equal to zero uh, F printf Standard error, W say startup, error, percent D, W say get last error, return negative one. Fuck, I can't hit escape. I'm so used to that in Vim. It's not Vim. Oops, wrong one. Wrong one. Oh, God. That. Oh ho ho! And this should fail? Uh, this should this should fail. I don't know. One of these I would expect to fail. Hey! Sick. Two point oh. Okay, okay. Two point oh. We're gonna do two point oh. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. So easy, chat. Um oh we don't want connect yet. We're not we're not ready to connect. We'll make a we'll make a socket. Uh we don't want async. Yikes. Socket. Uh uh, there it is. Okay, uh, I mean, I, I know how to do this anyways. Uh, socket, sock is equal to socket, afinet, ip, proto, t, uh, uh, sock stream, uh, ip, proto, tcp, if sock is equal to, I think it's invalid under socket, yeah. Uh, socket... Um, yep, yeah. mm-hmm. Okay, this socket error. Ah, WC get less error. Here we go. Ah, you piece of shit. Uh, include, uh, winsock.h. Winsock2? Winsock? Hmm. What header? What fucking header is this? 
What header is this? The complete IO stack is async? Yeah. Yeah. Windows has had async forever. It's an afterthought in Linux. The NT kernel is much better than the Linux kernel. It's just a fantastic kernel for design. Love it. Socket. Illegal use of this type. Um, okay. How would I find that? Let's look at our includes. There's probably not that many, to be honest. Is it winsock.h? Win... Win... Winsock.h. That's what I did. Is there another one? Uh... Yeah, type def right there. Pull in Windows if necessary. Did I not save it or something? Also, let's not pull in Windows. Am I crazy? Is it not type defing that like immediately? Winsock API. Is it a semi? Oh, is it this? Is this ANSI? Yeah, it's ANSI. All right, done. Do you know what USB fuzzing is? Of course I know what USB fuzzing is. Okay, uh, initialize WC. Create a TCP socket. Um, and then uh, connect sock. Um, Socketer, size of socketer. Uh, Prova, thank you so much for the raid. Hell yeah. How was your stream? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Hello, how is everyone doing? How, how are all the raiders doing? We're finally getting to the fun part. We're writing some Windows NT MIPS code. So many raids today. Yeah, today is a raidy day. It's a fantastic day. Thank you so much. Funny to think that the NT we know today may have never existed if Deck didn't pull a uh, plug on Cutler's project. Yeah. Hello, Pana. How you doing? Did you have a view? How many floors up are you? None. <laughs> uh. There we go. <laughs> I fucking love it. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. I know you can't hear me well. Oh, rip. I didn't even go full screen. I'll do it again. I'll do it again, chat. There you go. All right. It's a beautiful room. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cozy. I don't have a fire going today, but I have a fireplace right next to me. And it's really nice. See a Herman Miller? Yeah, this is an Arian. How many monitors do you have? I have 10 set up here. But it's two different computers. Okay. Um, so, this runs. This won't build. Uh, we need to make a socketer now. Um... <laughs> 
What state are you in? I'm in Washington. I'm right outside Seattle. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see what socketers they have. Yeah, probably want socketer in. Ooh, programming with sockets. Oh, look at this. WSA startup load libraries. I see. Sockets, basic concepts. Oh, derived from the document 4.3 BSD. <laughs> oh, client server model, out of band data, broadcasting, byte ordering. <laughs> oh my gosh. Socket options. Oh, can disable the Nagel algorithm. Oh, I, I think the cursor is gone. Shit. Oh no. Oh no. Why does that happen? Um Okay, let's uh Um What do you think next page is? What do you think the next page is? Is this a VM? This is a VM. Oh, it's back. Okay. Deviation, typical BSD style, preferred style, invalid socket. Mm-hmm. WC get last error. Mm-hmm. Yep. WC get last error. That's a function. Renamed things. Include Winsock. Oh, this is so cool. Raw sockets. Socket functions. Wow, look at all this stuff. This is so cool. This is so cool. What a what a trip through memory lane. Wow. 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 This is beautiful. Documentation is so good. Oh. Um. Okay. Do you think I can move lines? I can select a line. Okay, that's good enough. Um. Socketer sin family. It's AF inet. Socketer. Sin adder dot in adder is equal to uh inet aton uh one eighty two one sixty two one two is that right? <laughs> uh socketer dot sin port is uh h tons uh one two three four. I feel like that's really close. Ah oh, rip. Um, do I need, um, ah, I don't know what it is. Let's, uh, let's find it. Socketer in. Oh my god, I feel like I almost nailed that. I was so close. Oh my gosh. Uh, what is this header, though? Mm. Sis? No. Hmm. Actually, is there, like, a TCP? No. Hmm. It's right there. Okay. Oh, struct socketer in? Yeah, it probably is, isn't it? Thank you. That is... That's the right call. In adder. Yep, it's not in adder. It's, uh... Um... S adder. I think it was an upper S. 
Ooh, function incompatible. Nah. That's fine. Uh, const struct socketer in. There we go. Uh, we set the family, we set the port, we set the adder. Inet Aton. Ooh. 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 What Piton? Hmm. Um, I could do get a, a get adder info. Maybe. Hmm. <sighs> WS2 TCP IP? You see that? No. Um, I just don't think this is a thing. Uh, get, uh, uh. Well, that's sin adder. IP port. Wow. IP address. Because there's an S adder. I mean, I can do the bytes as well. Inet Python? I don't I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think that exists. Get adder info I don't think exists either. Yeah. Um Hmm. Let's see if there's an example in bind. There is. S adders oh sick. Uh connect. Come on, have an example. Uh, uh, hmm. Send to? I might have an example. Oh, no, send. Hmm. Are you pro C as well or just C? Just C. I'm just C. I'm no expert at C. I think the docs that we were in actually had it. Programming with sockets. Um, socket functions. Get, uh, get peer name. Inet converts a Inet adder. Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Uh, if no error occurs, zero. Okay, so if this is equal to socket error, uh, let's just say connect error. We're not going to clean up. We're not going to have clean up stuff. Uh, okay. That's good. That looks great. That looks great. Okay. Uh, let's uh, launch a terminal here and we'll do NCL1234. Uh, let's do verbose as well so we can see the connection hit. Woo! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to be a doozy. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good! It's gonna be so fucking good, chat. It's gonna be so fucking cool! Uh, connect to the uh, socket. Okay, um, and then we'll uh, read the uh, payload length. Okay. Um, the uh, int len, uh, unsigned int len, and then we'll do a read, um, or a receive on sock into len for size of len, zero options, 
uh, if this is not equal to four, uh, if not equal to size of len, we're just gonna give an error here. Even though it might not be an error, it might just be a partial completion, but that's okay. We're just gonna return an error anyways, because, uh, yeah, this is easier. Uh, I really don't want to write a resumable read thing. Uh, okay, missing... Oh, yep, can't do that shit. What am I doing? What's interesting is I actually prefer that way of, of writing code. Okay. Okay, um, sweet. So, that should be good, and then A, 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 bam. There it is. Okay, uh, printf percent x, uh, len. Uh, put a new line in there. Okay, so now we should be able to send down a length. A, 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 A. 4141441. Perfect. Okay, we have transmission. Nice. Okay, and then we'll uh, read the payload. Um, buff is equal to malloc len. If not buff, pair malloc error. Uh, return negative one. Okay. Okay. Char buff. Say uh, unsigned. Okay, and then we'll do uh unsigned int uh 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 Unsigned int off bread. I think this returns int actually. Um, receive. Yep, it does. Okay, so we're gonna want off and int bread. Okay. So then we're gonna do while. Um, did I initialize that? Uh, int offset is equal to zero. Okay, we initialize that. Then while offset is less than len, uh, bread is equal to read. Actually, I can do this here. Uh, bread is equal to read. Yeah, we'll scope that. Good old C with copy pasting error conditions five times in one function. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty awful. <laughs> uh, receive sock uh, buff plus offset. Um, unsigned int remain is equal to len minus offset. Remain zero. If bread is equal to socket error um we're just gonna say if bread is equal to zero because that'll also uh show us when we have a close if the if the socket was closed and we get a zero this isn't gonna be the most robust program in the world it's not it's not supposed to be um this is gonna be received payload so, remain is equal to length minus offset, which is the length we want to receive, minus the offset, which is initialized to zero. Uh, we're going to receive from the socket at buffer plus the offset, which is zero, and then remain is the full length, zero, and then if bread is less than or equal to zero, then we had a receive error. Otherwise, we're good. Printf len. Fantastic. Um read everything okay that should be good that is a program okay and then uh 39 let's just change that quick uh char star okay no warnings no errors looks like some good code uh <laughs> 
Markov chain looking motherfucker. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, uh, what do we want to do here? How do we want to run this? Hmm. Forgot to update offset. Oh That was almost a tragedy. That was almost a tragedy. That could have been the end. That that could have been the end of the whole program. Okay, uh, so what do we want to do here? We want to make a server? Um... How do I want to... Let, let's make a... Uh, yeah, 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 Uh, cargo new bin felf serve. Vim sirs. Okay, um... Uh, uh, let args is equal to, uh, standard env args, uh, dot collect vec. Okay. If args dot lens not equal to two, uh, print, um, usage, uh, felf serve uh ip port and this is the binding ip port and the file uh okay that looks good that's good all right we have a felf server Okay, and then we'll just go and, uh, we'll just go and, uh, just yoink some code. Uh, TCP listener, that, 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 bam. Okay, listener incoming handle client stream? Nah, we passed that shit in. Uh, let listener is TCP listener bind. Uh, ba 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 args one dot unwrap. Nah, fuck it, we'll do this. Uh, IL results. Use standard IO. Ah! Uh, we should be fine with IO result for this program. Uh, use standard uh, net TCP listener. I uh, got some stuff going on here that's pretty advanced. Um, and then this is uh, sock is uh, IO result. Um, TCP stream. Okay. Uh, standard thread spawn move. Um, okay. Okay, and then, um, ba 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 adder. Adder, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, file. Yeah. Gonna do path buff. Uh, use standard path path buff. Um, 
My path is path off new. Uh, from RX one. Okay. Um, I uh, results. Okay, I can actually handle this TCP stream directly now. Um, because what I can do is this. Okay, and then that is now bubbling these errors up so we can use question mark syntax in here, which is nice. Uh, okay, bu -bu -bu -bu. Okay, and then when we get a new client, all we're gonna do is let payload is a standard FS read uh, file. And then we'll do uh, sock dot write exact payload dot to any bytes. Um, hmm. Payload dot lin as I 30 as you 32. I need to read chat. I'm sorry. Um, does Gamos have a, a degree? Um, no, I do not. I, I just have learned all this stuff myself. Slowly but surely. Um. Okay, let's see. Uh, all right, right, exact. Payload.lin, uh, dot two. Hmm, what do I want to do? I'm going to do two big Indian bytes, which is kind of weird, but, uh, Right, the header, and then sock dot right, exact, uh, right all, I think. Uh, payload. Bam. I'm pretty sure that's just it. Yep, and a little ref. So we're gonna do big Indian bytes. Cannot borrow is mutable for the socket, I'm guessing. No problem. Okay, so felt serve. So that's going to reload the file and all of that stuff. Uh, okay, so um, print serving uh, bytes to this payload.len and then the sock.peer address. Okay, so we should be able to now felf serve uh, one two three four serve out dot felf, and that should now be serving the felf. And let's see what happens. Receive error zero. No such file or directory. Okay. Um. Oh, you know what? I bet that is, yep, that's 100% what it is. Okay, uh, now we can felf serve out.felf. Bam! Malik error, no error. Okay, serving 88 bytes to that. Perfect. Um, why are we getting a malloc error? Uh, cause I send it beginning. Um, int len, uh, len is equal to network to host long. Uh, length is, um, big Indian. I don't know why I do big Indian, to be honest. Nope. There we go. Read everything. 88. Perfect. That's correct. Um, the problem is I don't have like a network to host long for little Indian is the main problem. 
That, that's the problem is I don't have a good helper for that ending conversion. I mean, I can change it. I can change it. Desu, Desu doesn't like it, so fuck you, Desu. Two Ellie bites. Fine. Fine, Desu. Fine. Fine. You win. You win. Do you feel good now? There you go. <laughs> there it is. Now, now it's a little Indian. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Um... Okay, read everything, and then what we're going to do is um, we're going to read the header. Uh, so the pointer, char pointer is equal to the buff. And then we're going to do um, if off, uh, if len is less than size of UN64T, there's no way this exists, does it? There's no way this exists. Um, can I do that? There's no way. Long followed by long is illegal. Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, uh, three times eight. Um, so this is, uh, this is a felf, uh, one plus U64, um, entry plus U64, base if it's less than that printf printf standard error invalid filth turn negative one yeah fuck error handling um okay uh then uh, we'll do int uh if mem compare pointer with felf oh one eight is equal to z if that then uh f printf standard error uh missing felf header okay return negative one okay uh pointer plus equals eight okay and then we'll do uh int low high okay uh times low uh, or low is equal to, uh, we'll say unsigned. Low is equal to unsigned int, um, uh, pointer plus plus. Okay. So I'll cast it. Okay, so we have the low part and we have the high part. Um, if high is not equal to zero, uh, f printf standard error, uh, unhandled 64 bit address, uh, return negative one. Right? What's the size of int on MIP64? It's 32 bits. <laughs> FBI open up. Illegal code. Holy shit, are we just are we just doing this right? Okay, so this is going to be um entry uh and base. Okay, printf uh loading at percent x entry percent x uh, base entry. Wow! <laughs> yeah, hypervisor is uh, definitely a fun person. Let's uh, let's let's solve some of that funness right now. Let's just do some uh, some of this. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Um, just don't fucking troll. Like, don't. You're literally annoying chat. Like, you're either trolling, in which case you're not providing anything of value, or you're just genuinely annoying person, in which case you provide nothing of value. It doesn't really matter which one it is. It was a bot, yeah. I wasn't really paying attention to chat. <laughs> Dude, use Calic? No, fuck Calic. I'm generating rant content. <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> my bro. Yeah. How does that increment work? Shouldn't it increment to temporary unsigned in pointer? Mm. No, unfortunately, 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 this is just the beauty of C plus or C and C plus plus. Um, yeah, so I cast the pointer into a pointer to an unsigned int, and then I update it by one, which happens to be the size of an unsigned int. So it actually updates it by four bytes. So these are seeking it four bytes at a time while also pulling out the data. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, and then we have entry there, and then we should have the raw bytes. Um, uh, okay, so now we want to allocate that base. Um, and then we'll do unsigned int end is equal to base plus uh, len minus, um, whatever the size of the headers, which is three times eight, right? So this is the end. In the end, it doesn't even matter. God warrior, thank you so much for that. Three months of support, hell yeah. That cast creates a temporary, it does not. <laughs> okay, uh, then we have the end. Right? Um, so we should be able to print this. Entry, this, percent x, percent x, end, and then end minus base should be the size. Yep. 40 hex bytes, 64 bytes. That's exactly what we expected. All right. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to virtual alloc. And we need to virtual alloc at a specific address. And the specific address that we need to allocate at is base. And then the size that we need to allocate at that base is going to be, actually we'll do base and uh, not FFF. Um, and then here we'll do, uh, um, unsigned int align base is base and not FFF. So that's going to 4k align it. Then we're going to unsigned int align end is equal to end plus FFF, uh, and not FFF. Okay, align base, align, and minus align base. Uh, prot, oops, uh, page, execute, read, write. Um, uh, mem commit or mem uh, reserve. Uh, alloc. Julian C, thank you so much for the four months of support. Hell yeah, virtual alloc, pointer mismatch for parameter one. Yep. No problem. No problem. I don't know how I feel about C20. Ranges seem nice, but uh, a bit weird. Had a look at concepts, but I gave up after an hour. Oh, interesting. Uh, what? That means I'm not closing a paren. You don't need to do that, do you? Yeah, that's not necessary. That's definitely not necessary. Am I crazy? Yeah. What? Oh, um. Oh. Oh. This. Whew. Whew. For a second, I thought I didn't know how to code. All right. So now that, that's gonna virtual alloc. Um. Printf alloc percent x to percent x uh, uh alloc attempt percent x to percent x percent x um got percent x uh so we have align base 
align end, align end minus align base, and then we have the uh, actual alloc that we got, and that is percent p. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's the dream. It's the dream. It's the dream allocation. <laughs> oh, I think that's just a failure. I don't think that's null. I don't think that's actual. I don't think that's... Wait, no, that is null. Oh, I think that is null. Oh. Oh, I think that's actually... Oh, I think it did it. Oh, nope. Return value is null. Okay. Hmm. Uh, what's wrong with that? Is, is it... Hmm. Doesn't like it? Why doesn't it like it? Hmm. If alloc is not equal to uh, void align base, uh, uh, printf standard error virtual alloc error percent d get last error. It's a pretty low address. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Thinking 487. Um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Uh, where's the error code table? They probably haven't changed them, so I could probably use a modern reference. So historically it was called error codes. Um kinda don't want alphabetical. Hmm. There's also a format error message. Yeah, that's true. But it's hard. Um. Invalid address. Yeah, I think it is. <sighs> Alec attempt that to there. Is my page size too small? Let's try this. Let's try this. Hmm. Doesn't like that. Let's let's just add. Let's add this. I just don't know why it would fail to alloc there. Uh, am I getting order of opt? Yep. Um. Just do this. It's a it's a hack, but we're just gonna see. Perfect. Okay, it's that. It's entirely just the address. That's fine. Um, that's no problem. Okay, no problem. No problem. Okay, so now we're just gonna go here and uh, make. Okay, and then we ld. Image base, perfect.
You know, we'll, we'll put it at Leet, because that's fun. That's fun. Okay. Um, XXD out dot felf. Yep, that took effect. Boom! Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Okay, it's pretty standard. Okay. Um, let's see. What do we got up here? Entry. Jump to the entry. Uh. Just like that, I think. It's pretty close. Come on, more friends. Fuck. Um, really? Do I have to do that? I don't... <laughs> oh, yeah, it's that. Yeah, you're right. Thanks. Uh... Yeah, that's right. Um... Yeah. Hell yeah. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Uh, slash debug cdb hello world dot exe. Oh, I should probably copy it in. Yeah, I just I just executed a nop sled to the end. Uh mem copy. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Uh pointer. Um I think that's correct. I was about to say, that shouldn't crash. There we go. There we go, we got Rust executing. <laughs> I do want base, I do not want Alec. It's actually way different. <sighs> Alec is aligned. Okay, um, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, um, wow, yeah, that's pretty dank. Um, let's see what kind of debug tools I got. Um, Kind of curious what these are. Dump check. Okay, that's what I thought. Yep, these are all dump. Yep. Okay. Um. 
image config path to symbol files um so i'm curious if i can uh i'm curious if i'm going to be able to convert a um a cough into a pdb uh cough to pdb that's what i really need right now Symbol, cough symbols to PDB. Debug type cough. Um, do I have like dump bin? Oh shit, I do. Okay, um, wow. Uh, win and tease system 32 entos kernel. Shit. Uh, win and t system 32. And to OS kernel dot exe. Uh, D. Hmm. Hmm. There we go. D colon. Damn it, chat. Behave. Um, okay. How would I? Hmm. Okay, uh, I really would like those symbols. Um, when and see symbols. Can I just look at Entos kernel dot debug? Uh, exe. Okay. Okay. Oh my god, it's full private symbols! Oh, they're so hot. Yeah, we gotta- we gotta get these to apply somehow. <laughs> we gotta get these to apply. Dude, this is sick. I don't think I can disassemble this. Yeah. Um, how do I merge those? There's probably a way to merge them or, or work with them. Let's let's find let's see what kind of tools we have. Um Hmm. Hmm. Is dump bin in here? Yeah. Edit bin. Um. Uh, actually, we can do um. CDB. Uh, debug CDB. Um. <laughs> You can open exes now. I don't know if you can back then. So let's let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Um uh winnt system32 entos kernel.exe. Um dash g Uh 
Uh. Fuck. <laughs> Help. Question mark. Slash. <laughs> Sick. Uh, that's really nice. We tried, we tried that, uh... Motherfucker. Hmm. I think it's Z for a, a mini dump. Not G, it's Z. So, the dream here is that this will open this as a dump. No. <sighs> um. Hmm. Hmm. Link MC prep profile. And make. Hmm. What do I want to do? Hmm. Um, what are you trying to do right now? I just want to get symbols applied, but that might be hard. Um. I mean, I can, I can write a parser for this. X turns. Line numbers. Yeah, there's like line number info. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. That's so fucking cool. Um... I mean, this is probably good enough, um, but I... Hmm. Hmm. I just don't want to do this if there's a tool that that just does it. What's that? I don't I don't know what that does. Okay, bitmap compiler. Okay, cool, cool. Um, L count is that line count? F time, dump bin, data object viewer. Um, hmm. Ah. 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 Um, what is this?
Now what is this? Okay. This is fun. This is fun. CV. Ugh. D. WinNT system32 NT OS kernel.exe. Okay, what the fuck did that just do? Uh, what did that what did that do? Did that modify my kernel? Um No. Um Hmm. Mm. Moose. Okay. Uh. Hmm. 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 No idea what that does. No idea what that does. <laughs> Amazing tool. Yep. Mm, no clue what that does. What else we got here? PSTAT, PView, IDE. At least it's fast. It probably does something. We're just doing it wrong. What's well, TGS 3D? That's my 3D modeling software. There's a help param. Yeah, that just does that, though. Okay. What? So it so that uh okay. Strip debug. I think this strips it out. I think this goes the opposite way. I think this strips out debug symbols. Um Let's see what CV pack is. Let's see if we can find anything online. CV pack. Why would debug sims? That could maybe be the output. Like you do strip and debug file. I don't. I don't know. Um. Oh. If you wish to use the code view debugger, then you have to use CV pack on the executable once the linker has created it. Uh, yeah, I think it I think it creates the debug file. I think that's what it does. Um that that's my guess. Uh, I x eighty six. Interesting. That's not one you see often. Hmm. What shed? A hotspot editor. Wow. Did people used to care about performance? Huh. Huh. It's not a thing anymore. Um. Hmm.
Did you accidentally overwrite your debug file? No, I didn't. I, I didn't. Nothing, nothing's been touched. Yep. Yep, still there. Um, so... Hmm. It's hard to say what I want to do with this. Like, do I want to apply symbols? Do I want to... I mean, I might just be able to load that binary relatively okayly. Um... Okay, I have FTP. How will I send a file out of this VM? What's the best way for me to transmit a file? I mean, we can as hmm. we can assume that it's. Uh, let's go and just we can just go grab them. I think we just have them on our disk already. Uh, NT Kimu ISOs free. MIPS. Uh, did I extract it yet? No. Cab extract free MIPS. Uh, Entos kernel that exe. Oh, is that just already PE? Oh. Okay. Strip to external PDB. Yep. Pretty standard. All right. Let's uh, let's open that. Do, 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 do. We might have exports, and exports might be good enough. Exports might be good enough. Uh, where am I going? There we go. Ah, it's not great. It's not great. Not the best thing I've seen in my life. Get a SMBV1 server running somewhere. <sighs> okay, let's see if we can find like BAO30. Hmm. No. Um, K flush entire TB. This isn't terrible. Um, oh God. Oh god, we're analyzing. Does this security research lead to good uh, bounty payouts for you? No, I don't, I don't do bug bounties. I just do contracts. I don't like unreliable income. Uh, 20F68. How do I search? Is there no search? Tissue F six eight. Wasn't it two zero F six eight? Hmm. Okay. Let's look at one of these. Uh K I decrement quantum A six F five C F five C. Hmm. RTL delete, A6FB8. A6FB8. I don't know, dude. Um. Okay, let's try and anchor. Let's anchor off something. We might have different bases. CV to PDB? What's this? K 
code view dwarf to PDB? What? What? Um, yeah, we can try that. We can see what happens. We can see what haps. Let's, uh, ship this over to here. Let's do some experimenting. Uh, free... Uh, support debug... MIPS and toss uh, symbols and toss exe and toss kernel dot debug. The problem is I don't think this is code view. This is a DI file. Hmm. Hmm. This is a Windows tool. Okay. Uh. Oh Jesus. Uh. Mm, yep. That's that's gonna be a nope. That's gonna be a nope from me. Hmm. I mean, how, how complex can this possibly be? So there's a string table. There's a redirection to the executable, so you know what the executable is. And... These are mappings. So those are all of the strings. There's probably just like a length. There's like probably a number of entries, a null terminated list of strings. And then afterwards, there's going to just be like associated things afterwards. I don't know. Um, what was your question, DJ Clown? I, I probably missed it. Let's see. Uh, hmm. I also want to open, um, honestly, I'm actually fine just looking at, um, let's grab, uh, free MIPS NT kernel MP, uh, um, NT DLL. Copy that here. So we want NTDLL. We just need to figure out syscall numbers and syscall calling conventions. And that should be pretty easy. So we can just look at NTDLL, RTL create heap. Uh, that's not a great example. Hmm. Right. ZW right file. Perfect. There we go. Done. That's literally all I care about. There you go. Uh, it looks like v0, and then you do a syscall. So you do a syscall SVC instruction. Um, okay. Desu posted this. Uh, I don't think that's gonna line up. <laughs> I don't think 32 bit x86 is gonna is gonna line up. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Let's see. Let's see what uh, zw. Write file. NT write file. Uh, C8. And this is C7. <laughs> yep. And request data is CA. And this is C8. Yep. There we go. 64 is also there. I don't, I don't think... I don't think... That's gonna... That's gonna do it for us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to cover MIPS <laughs> or the calling convention. Okay, so V0 um, is the argument. Um, and then we just do a syscall. C8. 
this call? Yeah. Okay, so that's just SVC zero. Um, let's do a uh, ZW exit. Uh, ZW um uh uh b -b 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 exit. Isn't it exit process? Uh, what does the exit process go to? Yeah, it'd be nice to have symbols. Terminate. There we go. ZW terminate. That's the one. Uh, and then if we do ZW terminate process, I think it just takes the process handle and null is your own process. Actually, it will take, um, um, So you give it an exit status as well. So we can see what uh, excerpts there are for this. Called from here. Yeah, so this is probably exit pro... Yeah, I... Hmm. Uh... DLL. NTDLL to DLL. Log that text. Uh, okay. Where would that be? When NT symbols DLL. NT DLL dot debug. Oh, dot debug. Shit. Um. Okay. Log dot text. Uh, are these relative? Are these relative addresses? Let's... Oh, this is gonna be really cool, chat. Um, it's quite impressive that NT is ported to six architectures. It kind of is, but at the time, that was kind of required. It was kind of required that you hit multiple architectures, because we didn't live in a monoculture, so, like, it was just expected that your OS would run in multiple environments. Which, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird if you think about it like that. Um, oh, there he goes, the mouse. Ah, oh, fuck my ass. Um, um, mm. NT DLL dot text. Okay, and then we'll do exe NT OS kernel uh, dot debug NT OS kernel. Okay, um, and then we'll shut down and we'll grab these files off this disk. Oh boy, what happened? Uh. Save changes. Uh, no. <laughs> How do you load a windbag fizz memory dump into Boxer Kimu? Oh, that'd be pretty easy. Um, maybe just rip out the rip out the physical memory sections and load them up. <laughs> like Kimu, you can literally provide just uh, arbitrary physical addresses on the command line. To like load things into okay so now we have to do this uh, hmm. uh uh this 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 really sucks um okay mm, uh, Uh, I don't know. I'm going to guess P2. Okay. I'm just kidding. P5. Mm hmm. Uh. 
Uh. Okay, uh. that's good. Um, and then pseudo U mounts. Uh, cumu. Done. Okay, we did it. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, so we can look at these in a realistic environment. Uh, chmod uh, 644. Uh, we're gonna do 444. I just wanna make sure I don't fuck these. Okay, NTDLL. We're gonna put this alongside of this. Okay, let's look at ZW open process. And that's also NT open process, which is correct. And that's 58C22 two, two is it's relative. It's relative. Fuck yeah. Okay. Okay. So, if we take this is loaded at um where is this loaded? Probably not gonna get to the fuzzing part yet, but that's that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay. Um, this. This is the base. Plus, OX two two five eight four. Yep, that's all an alarm. Okay. So then, um. Okay. Okay. So if we look at terminate process. And then we look at this xref. We don't know what this thing is. But if we take that and we subtract off uh, 77F42314 minus that, we'll have uh, 12314. And we'll see that this is LDR process starter helper. Okay. Okay. So I'm guessing no type parens means that it's uh I'm guessing no type parens means that it is um um ba 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 that's probably a function uh and then let's look for things that are not e okay so there's weak external um. So there's also static. Okay, so let's go to um, seven ff this uh, seven seven f that ah fucking whatever uh, ox seven seven f three one two three four plus ox. Let's take a look at one of these two on nine seventy. Is this a function? Yeah, that is. That's totally a fucking function. Um, okay, um, so I think we want anything that's no type paren is a function. Um, let's take a look at this, this no type static, 4FAC4. Yeah, that is data. RTL create property set? Yeah. To be honest, I think we just blast these names on everything. Debug no type file name static. Let's um let's start parsing this. Um cough symbol table. Okay, file name. Then we have the file afterwards. Use any Vim plugins? I do not. Okay, for line in open, ntdll.txt, uh, dot read, uh, dot lines, it's like split lines or something, uh, split lines, is it one word, is it two words, it's 
fucking python, so it's in incredibly inconsistent. Okay, and then we're gonna do, um... Uh, moose is re compile, uh... We're gonna look at 0 through 9, A through F, and, uh, 3 or more? Can you do that? Can I say 3 or more? And then, uh, 0 through 9, A through F, uh, specifically 8. Um, print moose.find line, moose.match line. And we want to specifically say this, and... Ah, dot star, don't care about anything else. Let's see what we do. None. Okay. Um... How do, how do I do this or more? Um... Um, three comma, thank you. You are a genius. Okay, so this is three or more, and I think that matches. We're, we're kind of just, all, you know, ballparking this, but we know that these start at three. We know that there's a space. We then know that there's uh, eight hex, and then we have space, and then we have some more shit, right? So this is like, we're trying to make this regex pretty strict, um, so that's end. Section two. I don't really care, uh, about what that is. Is this always, um, yeah, let's, uh, hmm. Match is this. If match, uh, if not match, continue. Uh, print Mitch uh, group zero uh, dot split on spaces. Okay, and then we want this. I really care about this. Um, sort you. Okay, so all of the sections that we have match that. Uh, NTOS kernel. NTOS kernel is going to be more complex, so we should do this one. All right, yeah, just sections and debug. Okay, fantastic. So then we have A through Z, 0 through 9. Um, this is just 5, I guess. Okay. So that's still matching, which is good. Um, What else? What's this? Uh, sort you on this. We never see anything in three. Column four is always no type. Um, so we'll say space space no type. This is still matching. So that's nice and strict. That's no type. Uh, six. These are the different things. Sometimes they're parens, sometimes they're not. Okay, so I think parens means it's a function. Like, oh, Pykov? What's this? Um, object format parse. Sim tables dot keys. Oh, I might that might just work. We're right in Rust. Oh no. Hello, I'm new here. Hey, welcome. How are you doing? Um. I guess we didn't really look for open source things. Uh, cough. Um, there's object, which we've worked with, but will object work for this? <laughs> we have we have looked at object. Um. Then I want, I guess, read, cough, cough symbol, a symbol of a cough file. I'm just concerned it's not going to parse these. Um, get clone. 
Let's just see if this exists. Because these files are, um, DI. So basically, if we don't see DI, uh, CD, uh, source cough, or read cough, DI, symbol, file. Okay, let's take a look at this. Open, read, symbol, table. Chat, we're just gonna we're just gonna do what we know is gonna work. Cause we know we literally know this is gonna work in like five minutes. <laughs> like uh, Okay, no type external. No type static. Um, I actually really want this. Is there split white space in Rust? Or in, uh, this? Can I do this? Ah, oh, fucking hell. Uh, just split? Okay. Zero, uh, sort you. Okay. Those are addresses. Then we have the sections. Then we have the no type. That's not always correct. Uh, yeah, I think we just have to do this, I guess. Fuck it. No type. Uh, so space space no type space um space space no type space uh an optional paren um how do i group that uh, how do how do i how do you, how do you do groups again where i want to say i specifically want those two in sequence Okay. Can I do groups? Is that gonna give me like an iterator over groups? Okay, now we're just not matching on anything. Um, yeah, that's fair. I forget if Python is escaped or not. It is not. Okay, so we have the ID, this, okay. And then we have a group here that is uh, parens and it is uh, zero or one. What's zero or one plus? No, that's one or more. Zero or one is question mark. Hmm. Hmm. Is that not right? Okay. Okay. Some of these should probably be functions, I think. Um. Hmm. Yeah. That's not matching. There we go. I, yeah, I didn't want the curlies. Okay, there we go. 
Yeah, so we see if it's a if it's a function or not. Which is fantastic. What are you looking for? We're trying to get symbols. Um, okay. Um, no type. Then we have that. Then we have, is that a tab? Is that always four? Okay, one or more white space. And then we have another group here. Um, let's say this is A through Z, A through Z, 0 through 9. Uh, one or more of those. Oops. Okay, um... We're going to print unmatched lines. And that looks good. That looks pretty good. Uh, so we have external. Uh, so this is four. No, this is five. Okay, file name static, weak external and external. Okay. And then after that, that's kind of filled up until we have a, I think, this. Um, we have one or more white spaces, followed by a pipe, followed by a single white space. Actually, I'm going to say that explicitly. Uh, yeah, we'll do this. And then there is a dot star until the end of the line. Okay. Um, what's going on here? External. Uh, I need to escape the pipe. Hey! And if we don't have the space, then we'll have the space in here. Perfect. <sighs> okay, I think these are all um, functions. And then, yeah, this is a lock. Okay. 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 Uh, ignore offset. Ignore is funk type symbol is equal to Mitch groups print symbol offset symbol. Um, if is funk is equal to this. So these are only functions. Not that we really care. <laughs> um, okay. And then we'll do, uh, offset is equal to int offset, uh, 16. Beautiful. Uh, and then this is ntdll this is based at i guess um does anyone know binja stuff because i don't i can't say i'm super good at binja scripting so we want to apply these symbols in binja all we need to do is just apply a name x this okay so there we go we have symbols um, okay, so let's look at Python API reference. There we go. That looks good. Um, sweet. Okay. And then name. I don't know. Uh, uh, uh 
name, 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 name. What would it be? I just want to set all the names. Get section by name. Rename. Rename. Uh, uh, up, 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 up. Hmm. Name, uh, symbol? Do they call them symbols? Symbol. Okay. Um. Hmm. I know I've done this before. Um, bup, 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 bup. database. Define auto symbol. Thank you. Uh, automatically discovered. Okay. Um, so, and how do I get the base address of the program as well? Yeah, binary view. Everything starts at BV. Um, base. Shit. Uh... Binary view. Add function. I could do that as well. Um, hmm. Um, got load settings. Also, if there's a way I can do relative. Seek relative. Not quite. Um, image base. Uh, how the fuck do you get the image base? Um, hmm. Hmm. Let's do, uh, let's just open a, let's do some testing. BV, uh, BV entry point is the, will be the program entry. I'm, it might just be like, I, I'm just going to do a dir on BV. Uh, there we go. Oh, wow. Um... Hmm... BV dot um hmm oh is that wait really Hmm. 
I think that might just be a coincidence here. Um. Whew. What could that be, actually? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. What are we doing now? We're playing symbols. Um, we're playing symbols to a database because we have symbols, but we can't we can't really view them. Fuck. Um. Binary view. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. binary view. It's an object. Hmm. We really just want to get the base. Uh, I could get segments, maybe. And just get the first segment. Um... Get segment at. There's probably a clean one. That's... That's the downside. Offset. Oh, that's where my cursor is, isn't it? Shit. Ah! <laughs> uh. Ah, uh, bv dot start and bv dot end. Bv four, yeah. Hey, we did it. <laughs> okay, okay. Bv dot start. Um, where's our code? Here we go. Uh. uh bv dot start plus. Offset. Okay, and how do I run a fucking Python script? Um... I really don't want to add it as a plugin. What's the- what's the best way to do that? Uh... Um... Paste in console or download snippets plugin? Or use headless. Yeah. Um, um. Hmm. Uh. How do, how do I uh, uh, just evaluate this? Or import? Fuck. Yeah, it can like the script. Yeah, that's what I'm... It, what's, the, what's, the, what's the easiest way to do that? I, d I don't want to set up my, like, path and shit. That's just a pain in the ass. Oh, Python. What a piece of shit. <laughs> hmm... Exec? Python? This? What? What? That's... that's not how Python works. <laughs> that's just... that's just not how Python works. Um... Um... Uh, uh. Oh, well, okay. That's okay. I'm all right. All right. Uh, C. 
Sick. Just use the snippets plugin. Okay, we can grab it, but it's probably ass. Um. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. I think it worked though. Um, browse snippets. Okay, new snippet. Moose. This is cool. This is nice. Um, uh, home pleb NT symbols. Hmm. Okay. So this runs and goes to the log. I see. Uh, okay. That looks good. Hex. Yep, that's data. Data, data. Okay. Nice. Okay, um, so how do we name it again? Oh, you exact with, uh, I see. Okay. Anyways, um, then I need to actually set the fucking thing. I need to, uh, define auto symbol. Hmm. Should I do define user symbol? Um, hmm. Yeah, exec was working. Yeah. Like, I, it was just in the wrong path. Um, adds a symbol to the internal list of symbols. The symbol to define. Function symbol, data symbol, external symbol. Um... If is funk is equal to parens, else uh, adder is bv dot start plus offset uh, symbol. Okay, so define an auto symbol there, and then in this case. Uh, we'll say, in this other case, function symbol, what kind of symbols do we have? Just a data symbol. That looks good. YOLO! <laughs> um wow did we do it did we do it
Got a bunch of, like, dupe names and, on shit, and that's fine. Okay. How many things are not symbolized now? Oh, God, that's... Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Okay, um... So, wow. Terminate process. So we can see that terminate process is called from these locations. Well, that was fucking easy. Where are snippets saved? Is it saved in the database? I did not want to do that. I didn't think that was going to run. Fuck my bum hole. All right. Kill it. Um, and toss kernel. Snippets are saved in the installation folder. Okay, cool. All right. Wow, this is pretty slick. So this one's done. Technically, we could get like source line stuff as comments. Like that's one thing we could do, but basically we're just applying symbols everywhere. Um, kind of indiscriminately. So now what we can do is take a look at um, HLIL. There we go. Yeah. Open process while well, it does a syscall. Um, let's do open file. Oh, um. Hmm. Where is that? Like user 32? Where are like the high level APIs? Like open file. I think user 32. Oh, kernel 32. Hmm. Hmm. I see. Yeah, NT create file. Uh, it might be ZW. Yep, kind of depends. Whoever wins the race, ZW create file is obviously like the the root the root syscall, and that's what we'll probably end up invoking. But it's nice to see some of the higher level things as well. But we got the kernel. Um, we can go snippets snippet editor, and then here we'll just say. Entos kernel. Okay, and let's run this. Okay, so now pretty much everything should be named. Um, yeah, this is looking pretty good. Uh, Open file is not... I'm not talking about this, this call. Okay, so that calls I'll create file. Fantastic. Um, snippets, moose. Okay, that ran. Xallocate pool with tag. Mem move. This is good. This looks readable. <laughs> this looks readable. <laughs> All right. Nice. Nice. Okay, so what we want to do is... Um, so, how does write file work with... Um, how does write file work with... Uh, how do I get the standard out? What's the standard out handle? Is there a special handle? I don't know. Oh, oh, we're getting focused. Hmm. There we go. Problem solved. Um. Hmm. 
He had standard handle. Yeah, but that's in like user. So, um. Kana? Yeah, that's what I think it is. That is in kernel 32. Let's open up kernel 32. Uh, MIPS. Okay. Mm. ISOs, free MIPS, cab extract, kernel 32. Looks good. This will have like almost everything symbolized as is. Um, just because all this shit is exported for other use. But yeah, we're technically missing symbols, which is sad. Okay, so um, get standard handle. It does exist. Um, and if it's negative, uh, this is input, this is output, and this is error. Oh, that's not, okay, so this is error. So V0, this. So that's some global. Hmm. Yeah, it's some global. So I don't know the best way for me to do that. Um Let's uh let's try and open a file. Um Let's let's try and open a file. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, that's the kernel. Okay, so, uh, all right, let's start working on this. Um, oh, I wanted to do exit, let's do exit process. Yep, and then this has terminate process, and terminate process will call empty terminate process with negative one, because that will exit the current process with this argument. So this is why I wanted to open kernel 32, because you can look at the invocations and stuff, because some of these things can be a little bit annoying to work with. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make um, fn syscall1, and this is going to take an argument, an ID, which is a U32, and it will also, uh, U-size, as well as a, um, Arguan, which is a U-size. And then we can do unsafe asm. Uh, so we'll write some little inline assembly here. Actually, we can probably just do syscall, um, in... Uh, v0 uh, is id. I'm not getting the syntax right. Uh, xba 5. Okay, um, yep. Feature as an... Okay, and uh, Rust as I forget the syntax. Oh, uh, V0. Interesting. Um, is it this? I don't think so. You're rewriting it in Rust? Yeah, we're doing it in Rust. We're writing our shell code in Rust. Uh, invalid register. V0 unknown register. Okay. Um, A0. Okay. 
Whoa. Um, what? Huh. What? That's interesting. Is there just not MIP support? No, there should be. Um, using string little literals for register names enable support for architectures that use special characters in char uh, register names, such as MIPS zero one two. Okay. Um, MIPS. Oh wow, they're doing okay. Okay. Uh. Okay. Wow. Wow, they're going hardcore. Um. So V zero is uh. Let's find it. Uh, V0 is a uh, 2. Literally this. There we go. Um. <laughs> uh. Option D. Okay. Yep. There's a uh, load immediate into v0 yep that's v0 and there's a syscall fantastic okay um and then parameters are just in uh the next one so we have an in uh v0 uh sorry uh four this is arg1 okay so this is doing a syscall nice so we're gonna do syscall two Arg2 u size, and then this is just going to be in another 5 arg2. Okay, syscall 2, all Fs. This should be the uh, exit code. So that should uh, hopefully do an exit process, uh, and then an infinite loop. Um, ID arg1 arg2, that looks good. Arg1 arg2. Uh, and then finally, this will probably, I'm guessing it will return. Uh, what's something, okay, else if this is less than zero, so that's returning through, uh, v0, I think. Um, so, we should have an in, out, and, uh, ret. Okay, so now we can print, uh, or we can get the result of that uh, uh, core pointer write volatile uh, zero as const u size uh, as mute. Basically, we just want to make sure that this is actually going to write that value. Um, obviously, this is unsafe. Uh, store word v0. Okay, sweet. So it is getting that, so it knows that v0 is the return. Okay. So there we go, that is a syscall wrapper. Um, so this code, um, I'm just gonna run this server. Uh, nt uh, mips test and felf serve out.felf. Okay, so that should be serving. Now all we have to do is run make here, and then once we're done building that, uh, okay, let's see, fell serve is done, so we're gonna go into, we're gonna run the VM. Okay. So, um... Fuck off. Come on. Give me control. Um, CDHW. Hello world dot exe. Oh! 
Oh! Oh shit! How do you get the return code? Um. Um. Uh, how do I how do I get a return code? Is there a way in 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 uh, what is this batch? Um. Exit code. Error level. Okay, that's a good sign. So then what we should be able to do is this. And then change this to... Oops. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! We're in! Fucking don't get in the way of me run. Don't get in the way of me writing some rust. Alright. Alright. Oh my god. Fuck yeah. Wow. Okay. That was really impressive. Oh, wow, so cool. Mm. Okay. Um, SP uh, source syscall.rs. Okay. Uh, config target arc is mips. Mod pub mod mips. Source, uh, make their source syscall. Must be source syscall mips. What? Really? Did I? Wait, what? How? What? Oh, I didn't save this yet. I was about to say. Okay, um, yep, and then we're gonna do mod syscall. Not found in the scope. Yep. Uh, uh, I think I can do pub use, actually. Um... I'm being dumb. Uh, I think I can do syscall this. Not found in syscall. Pub use mips. Yeah. Um... Oh, yeah, I don't think I need this pub use. Oh, I do. JK lol. Haha, <laughs> XD. Okay, um, that's good. Okay, um, to argument syscall pub unsafe pub unsafe fn. Okay, now here we can do um, enum syscall uh repper u size and then we can have uh nt terminate process is equal to oxba okay bang bang uh syscall numbers okay syscall 2 uh yep and then what we can do now is pub fn exits 
Uh, we'll do NT terminate process. Um, handle. Eh, we'll just say exit. Code U size. And this never returns. And then we'll do um, syscall2, um, syscall nt terminate process as u size, not zero, and code. On safe. And then we'll do um, core. Uh, hmm. And we want this. Core hints unreachable unchecked. Right? Uh, exit the current process. Syscall. Uh, NT terminate process. A pub. Okay, and then we should be able to do syscall exit one, two, three, four. Uh, yep. Beautiful. Okay, so that should exit with one, two, three, four. Yep. All right. All right. Progress. Pro progress. Um, all right. Let's, uh... Okay. How, bi how big is our program so far? Ooh, 104 bytes. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That's awesome. More after seeing all the effort. Yeah, it, it it's all coming together now. Just wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, shit. Hmm. Hmm. Is the MSVC linker inside VM called using make? No, it's not. I'm not running anything inside here. I'm just running a program. I'm just running a program that downloads my uh, my shellcode and runs it. It does. It there's nothing is actually getting compiled in the VM. Um. Okay. So now what we need to do is. We need to open a console, and that's going to be really fucking hard. Um. Oops. I yeah, keep disassembling that. Um. Bop, 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 bop. What am I doing? What am I doing? Uh, T yeah, I don't know what the calling convention is. I do not know what the calling convention is. Um, how do I figure that out? I guess... Nips calling convention. I think it's pretty standardized. Let's see. Uh, argument registers. First four. Um, stack frames. Zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, is there room left for homing? I think there is. 
Let's look at the NT open file. So this is on receipt. Arguments are um. So we have arg one, arg two, arg three, arg four, arg five. Um. Yeah, it looks like it's homing it. Ten. Yeah, cause. Uh, zero, one, two, and three are in registers, and then this is storing var thirty, or it's zeroing that variable. Okay, I'm pretty sure you home and I think you home and push onto the stack, but it's not trivial. Um, so, and this might be wrong if I'm not doing subs. I might have to sub here as well. Calling convention? What's this? Oh, it's similar to other ones. Um, first four are passed in A0 through A3. I can't believe this exists. And the remaining parameters go on the stack after a 16-byte gap. The 16-byte gap represents the home space for the register-based parameters, as we've seen, blah, blah, blah. If it accepts fewer than four, you still must provide 16 bytes of home space. Things get weird when you mix in 64-bit or floating points. Um, once you've laid out the parameters in the structure... Uh, you load the first 16 bytes into A0 through A3, the rest go onto a stack. Okay, interesting. Huh. Okay, cool. That's exactly what I expected. All right, um, in which case, this is technically wrong. So we're going to fix that. We're going to make this correct. Um, so uh, to make this correct, we have to do a sub sp sp 10 hex and then an add sp sp 10 hex maybe i don't even know if this hmm yeah it's hard to say um uh sub i uh Oh, um, invalid operand. What? Um, is it these? Is it the fucking regs? It's not going to make me do this, is it? <sighs> Cisco has a different calling convention? Probably not. It's not it's not common to have a different calling convention except for XD6. That's just the that's the beauty of XD6. And by beauty I mean the 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 shit heap that is XD6. Um, I need the register number. There we go. Got it. Okay, we're in there. Um, SP. Unless I'm supposed to do dollar SP. Does it just want dollar SP? Thank God. Um, let's see if it has a sub IU as well. No. Okay. So we have to do add IU, negative 10. So we make room, and then we syscall. So we make homing space, uh, which is fantastic. So uh, that shouldn't change anything. It should just still just work just fine. Oops. Hello world. Echo. Looks good. Okay. So that shouldn't have really changed anything. We just subtract 16 bytes on the stack and do that. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to do... Um, 
We want to do a syscall six. And this is a six argument syscall. Uh, arg three, arg four, arg five, arg six. And this is when it starts to get a little bit more wild. So we're going to subtract room for six times four, uh, which is 18 hex. So we're going to make room for that. Then we're going to have in six. Um, in seven. Arg seven. Oops, not arg7. That's arg4. Um, okay, so what I'm thinking is that... Can I actually use the real names? I just didn't have... I never tried a dollar sign, did I? V0 unknown. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, then, that looks pretty good. Uh, okay, now what we need to do is now that we've made space on the stack, um, yeah, how do I want to do this, actually? Hmm. Hmm. It'd be nice if Rust had a syscall thing. I don't know if it does. Um, Rust custom calling convention. Because I know you can do naked. I don't know. Yeah, naked functions. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I don't I don't think I have a good way of doing this. So I do think I have to move all of the stack arguments. Um How do I want to do that? So, let's do unsafe syscall syscall 6 uh nt open file is OX4F, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, make obj dump. Okay, so we can see. Um, nice. Okay, so we see that setting up. Uh, four arguments, but then nothing else, of course, and then we make room on the stack and we allocate. So what we're going to do then is we're going to have in as a register arg5 and as a register arg6. Okay. And then um, I think these are zero and one. Actually, let's name them arg5. Um, I think it's this. Arg5, arg6 is equal to this. Correct. Okay, so then I should be able to do store word of arg5 at, uh, sp, um, 10 hex. And then this is at 14 hex. Um... Okay, named arguments cannot follow. So these just have to be the the first. Okay, that makes sense. Um arg5, arg6, in out. Okay, so we have the the ret. Okay. Hmm. Put some dollars. <gasps> 
There we go. Okay. Um, and then we have AT. And in this case, AT is zero. So uh, store that uh, to both 16 and 20. And I think that's now correct. So we provide room for homing. And then we then invoke syscall. So we, we subtract 24. We store at 16 and 20. So that fills up to 24. We invoke the syscall. And then we restore that. Um, I mean, I, I don't actually know who's responsible for doing that cleanup, to be honest. Um, uh, sub 40. Uh, it, is cl it is cleaned up by us. So this, is, this sh should be correct. So add IU, store this to the stack, and perform our syscall. All right. What's homing? Um, basically, the homing space is such that when you call a function, that function can put all of the parameters that you passed into registers into the stack. So in this case, we're passing six arguments, which means we need 24 bytes of space, 18 hex. Um, and basically, we only fill in two arguments because the other four are passed in via registers, but we provide the space such that if, for some reason, the call E wanted to just immediately store this onto the stack, it would have, like, all of the, all of the parameters directly on the stack. Isn't it storing the same register twice? It is because it's uh, zero. If they were different, we would obviously get different results, right? If we do this, we'll have different results. Um... Inline always. So let's mark these as inline. Okay. Yep, load immediates. I guess those are getting inlined anyways. We don't want to inline always. Let's just mark them as inline. Let's let the compiler decide when to inline this, but obviously, um, oh, now it's not inlining them. All right, we're going to inline always. <laughs> okay. There we go. So inline always. Why doesn't the callee spill on its own stack frame? Um, it can. <laughs> it, it, like, uh, it, it provides room such that it can, but usually it's just not necessary. In a debug build, that will typically happen, such that you can access all of the arguments. You're kind of pro providing room for the arguments to be stored for debugging. Um, anyways, let's see what we get now. Oh, we can't print. Uh, we'll do... Um, currently, this is how we're going to print. Uh, we're going to print via exit codes. Um, uh, 128. Okay. Okay. Wait. What? How? What? What? <laughs> uh, into your open file. 4F. Um. Okay. 4F. Exit code debugging. It's like printf debugging, only much slower. Oh, um. Used AT. Um, it's passing in AT for me, so let's just say, uh, set no at. But this should be reasonable. It's gonna do a syscall, which is, uh, 128. Um, this is confusing. Function prologs and epilogs. Yep. Yep. Add IU. Carve out space. Store monolith stack. Yep. JRRA. Yep. 
It sounds wasteful to make space if it's not even used. Welcome to your, your Windows calling convention. So that's really strange that I'm getting a 128. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint in here. Uh, okay. And then this should crash. Um, dot, dot, sla uh, dot, slash debug cdb hello world dot exe. Um, break OX 16. Let's try that. Let's try specifically that. Um, break 16. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. Uh, I think the other one wasn't showing up as a break point. Hmm. Hmm. Um, oh. Um, I might be fucking up the stack. Maybe I need a return address? I don't think so. That, mm. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Um, we'll see if we hit this breakpoint. Yes, we do. Uh, p, 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 p. Okay, we do a syscall. And then we return to... Um, where the fuck are we? J-R-R-A. Load word R-A-S-P. Do we... Hmm. Um, do I, do I need to give a return address? I don't think so. Because the other ones seem to work fine, right? Like... Oh, um, yeah, our exit is probably wrong. We probably do need to push a return address and, uh, false through. Yeah, yeah, and the reason that this is working, oh, interesting. The reason this is working, yeah, we actually want to jump in link there. Oh, we just want to, oh, we probably just want RA set. Exit process just exits, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, don't have to worry about that returning. Um, so let's see. Here's some invocations. Here's open file. We can see that it is... It is storing onto the stack at 10 and 14. Right? 10 and 14 are getting written to, uh, which is exactly what we're doing. I think the only thing is we should probably set RA. Does syscall not set RA? That's really interesting. Oh, weird. Interesting. So, um, hmm, hmm, how do I set RA? Um, store word to F, uh, load immediate into RA, the return address, which is to F. 
Um. Okay, and that's a problem because of, I think, relocations. Um. Is it? Um, let's try a move. Uh, X20. I don't know what kind of assembler syntax they're expecting. Hmm. Can you do PC plus size of syscall? Technically, yes. Um, move only works reg to reg. Yeah, I mean it's a pseudo instruction. Um, let's just see if this works. Yes. Okay. Um, sweet. So we can do pseudo ops. Um, that just means that we don't have, uh, relocation set correctly then. Okay, um, Rusty, uh, print, help, Rusty, Rusty print, um, uh, so we have code models, and we have... Hmm. Okay. Uh uh cargo relocation model. Let's see what we can do. Um, I can always set it here. Let's see if I can do re relocation model moose. Mm. Expected a table? What? Uh anything's better than YAML. That's pretty accurate. Uh cargo config. Uh, um Hmm. Hmm. Relocation model. Okay. Let's just do uh C relocation model is moose. Okay. Good. Static. I use a slightly different thing to make this calls. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um still not right. Um uh Let's see. Apply dynamic relocations? What's that? That sounds fun. We have to do this anyways. This is not related to syscalls. This is just, we need to have this bacon addresses and stuff. I don't know what apply dynamic relocks is, but that sounds kind of fun. 
Apply to link time values? Hmm, not quite. Um, let's try... Let's check PC. Plus five. Oops, PC plus five. Hmm. Letting Rust handle the args in the ABI. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, so... Fuck. <sighs> um... Don't link, uh, be static. Link against static libraries. Um, uh, I could also try a code model. Code model. Okay. Hmm. So, I mean, we can do, um, uh, what is it? Um, uh, PC two F. Um. Uh, two F minus dollar. I should be able to get a uh, relative. Um, what would it be? What would it be? Um, uh, is it AUI? Um, MIP pseudo instructions. Let's see what we have. Hmm. Um. I feel like there's, uh, MIPS address of offset. As to why MIPS provides homing space for the first four arguments. Uh, want your args to be called by value. Call you as a stack frame. Yep. Uh... Hmm. How do I... Ah, uh, add I U R A P C four. Mm. What? Oh, can you not? Uh, can you not add I U into R A? Okay, I might change the way that I do this then. Um, I might go the Desu route. I do think that might be a good way to do it. Um...
Hmm. Um. JRRA. Yeah, and I want, um, hmm. What do I want to do? Actually, if I have this syscall ID be the last argument, it actually plays really well. Uh, because then I could just use like a naked function. Um,. Hmm. I'm curious if the MIP syscall instruction doesn't uh, set LR or RA. That's what's just weird to me is I feel like I wouldn't need to do that. But I think that's what it's doing. Like, that's what this is doing. Does this just call NT open key? And then that's going to NT open. And at the end, it's going to jump RA. Saved RA is R. Okay. Yeah. It's literally expecting RA to be set. Okay. So, yeah, it actually jumps back to RA. And I guess syscall doesn't set RA. Um, MIPS manual, uh, MIPS 62, 64R2. I'm just really curious to see what the pseudo op is for that. Um, MIPS architecture. Let's get the manual open. MIP 64 instruction set. This call. Um, system call occurs immediately and unconditionally transferring control to the exception handler. Yeah, I think you manually set RA. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, in which case, yeah, we do need to make like a little wrapper around this. And I don't know how I want to do that. Um, I need to make this a function that actually gets called and um, if I have ID last, it just kind of works. Like if I do this, um, This is a little wild. Um, in two is ID. Um. In out ret um, semi on this. You did it with global assembly, and global assembly you can still do. Um, this is called six. Um, syscall 6, that is loading that argument into v0, syscalling. Um, yeah, I, um, crust mips thunk. 
uh, or rust. You want like, I want like a rust thunk function. And I guess I could do that with naked. I, I actually don't know if I could. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the, the thing that is really difficult here is that this is, I need this to just load that and syscall and not actually uh, JR. Um, and I, I mean, I can say no return, but I think that, um, I think uh, no return will make this um, emit some crap afterwards. Um, okay. Mismatch types. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I might have to do this in an assembly. Uh, and then we'll just say five. Okay, there we go. Problem solved. Um, yeah, that's going to do a break. So, what other ways do we have? Uh, globalism. Okay. Why would naked not work? Um, cause, well, let's see. It might. Um. Uh, pub on save extern fn. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Referencing parameters not allowed in naked functions. Um, so this is like not terrible. Um, so this is, yep, that's still going to have a, a return, right? Um, break would never be hit because this call jumps back to RA, which is outside of the function. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're right. Um, so unsafe extern fn that loads that word, it does the syscall, and then that's going to cause it to exit after the syscall. Yeah, it might be that easy. Um, then we don't have to really think about calling conventions, do we? Um, in out, ret, let ret, u size, ret. And then this is just the same thing. I think all these are now just the same, the same thing. It will never actually hit that stage. Um, so, how do I want to organize this? I think we'll do this. Okay. Um, and then these have to be inline never. Yep. 
Those have to be inline never. Uh, extern. So pub on save extern fn. Load that. This one's just moving a2 into v0 and doing a syscall. Um, then when these call syscall, they should be setting them up correctly. I think that will actually work. Yeah, so store word. So we make room on the stack. Jump and link, that's going to set RA. Uh, we pass the args, all that sort of stuff, and we're good. Macro to define the functions. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Um, that makes sense. Got to change these args. And yeah, I think we'll just make macros. Um... Why is CodeGen emitting a NOP after JRRA? That's the delay slot. So that instruction actually executes prior to the jump. It's just the way it works on MIPS. <laughs> Welcome to MIPS. Yeah. So like like this load uh, immediate A30, that executes first, then the jump. Um, it's basically due to pipelining. Yep. Probably saved like three transistors. So they uh, just offloaded that to software. <laughs> Um, I regret leaving programming. Would have been a programming god by now. Oh. Okay, and then, um, I am really curious. If I do this, this breaks, right? And what if I say that this, um. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Um. Yeah, and this call. Ooh. Um, hmm. Can you say it clobbers those? Yeah, that's what I'm kind of curious about. Um... Let's see how they do clobbers. There's a clobber ABI keyword. Okay, not supported. Um... Um, hmm. Um, I think clobbers you just say, uh, in. Or I think you have out. And then an underscore. Yeah. I think you just do this. Um so let's try let's try clobbering four. Um Hmm. 
Yeah, I think I need to say, like, in out for arg1. Yeah, but I just don't think I'm going to be able to set clobbers for memory. Okay. Um, you can set a specific reg in the quotes. That's what I did. Um. Uh, ba -ba -ba. <sighs> I would like to be able to inline this. I really want to be able to inline this. Um, <sighs> that works. What if I did arg4? Oh, it'll actually home that. Um. Ooh. Uh. Hmm. Um. Chat, this is going to be gross. Uh... Okay. Um... All right. Um, return address. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay, R is unknown. What's the actual one? Uh, 31. No! Um, oops. Ah, yes, okay. Mm hmm. Uh, <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Not really. Really? Call site was not defined with variable arguments. Be right back. Yeah, I feel like there's got to be a way.
All right. So, let's see uh, how we want to do this. Um. So, I think RA can only be touched by, like, the jumps. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, what can actually write to RA? I forget. But I think it, I think it might only be jumps. Um Hmm. No, that's not true. L I R A five. Right, we can we can do that. Uh hmm. Okay. So these are important. That homes them. Um, RA5, yeah. So that totally loads a thing. So... I just don't know why I'm not able to use a, a label. Let's say five forwards. The only thing I can think of is it's it's linking. It's like the code model and stuff. Um, uh, what would cause that? That would be um, <sighs> code model large. What kind of options do I have? Code model. Um. Hmm. Relocation model. We set that. Set it to static. Um. Hmm. Could you take the return address of syscall six? I don't. I. I can't. I can't get access to that. Um. Oh shit. Um. And I don't want to directly set RA either. To be honest, that's gonna break things pretty bad. Um. So I can just say inline never, but it's kind of annoying. I still don't feel like RA would be used. To me, that's just strange. I just, I just don't think that RA would actually be used. Um... Yeah, I just, I don't know if RA is actually being used. Are these all the syscall? Are these the syscall tables? Uh, no. So I'm really curious where the dispatch is for the syscalls. Um... Um, 
Yeah, I just don't think it would use RA. That maybe it does. Hmm. The fuck? Yeah, but these are Jalen. Like, we know that this gels. We know that the things that reference it. Um... Empty open file. We know that that does a gel. And this doesn't do a ret. So it has to be using RA. Okay, I guess it's, it's just, it's just using RA. That's so strange. So that's gonna gel. And then that moves that, and that moves that, which is good. Um, okay. So this should theoretically work, maybe. Um, five, okay, I think that's because we patched this. Uh, red is equal to this, so we're gonna perform this syscall and we should successfully get a return value from this, which we previously weren't. Yeah, and that's, um, mm, can we do conversions on this? Yes. Um, hmm. Oh, you can't select? Okay. Uh, negative 107, 37, 4, 1, 8, 1, 9. Negative. In hex is... Oh, well, not... Mm, okay. Well, all right. Yep, that's uh, okay. <laughs> Python hex negative of 107374181819. Um and that's tough. Uh I wanna do two to the thirty-two minus that. Oh, it's CO5. Okay, perfect. So that that does work. So this is is a setup that does work. Um <sighs> Hmm. Yeah, I think this is good. I think this is good. So this call will we'll jump back, pass in the arg last. Everything stays the same. This is setting up all the arguments here. Those, a three, uh, zero and zero. Um, AT is getting saved. I think this is the model we're going to go with. The inline never is kind of jank, but we say that this is a uh, unsafe extern FN, inline never. Um, yeah, and this works. Okay, so. Um, we're gonna make this be a syscall. All these are gonna take syscalls instead. Um, and then ID as you size. So now we have strong typing. That way we don't fuck up these syscall numbers. And then here, if we want this syscall, uh, nt open file, uh, 4f. Okay, we'll just start, uh, we'll just start doing this now. Sys call, sys call, nt open file. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. This is fine. Okay, so now we're just debugging. Yep, that's our error code. So now what we want to do is, um, yeah, so exits. Um, Okay, that looks good. So, uh, we need to fill this in with the correct args for nt open file. So the first thing that we have to have 
is an output for a handle. So we're going to have let handle u size is zero. And this is going to be a mutable reference to handle as mute u size as u size. <laughs> okay. And these are going to get a little bit gross. Uh, so that's the file handle. Then we have an, the access mask. And the access mask that we want, we're just gonna pass in, uh, we're just gonna pass in zero. And then uh, we're gonna keep going down the list. Okay, access mask, uh, object attributes. So that is a pointer to an object attributes. Um, okay, and object attributes is, this is where it already starts to get kind of annoying. Um, is object attributes. And then we have to fill that in correctly. Then we have an IOSB, an IO status block. Uh, this is a mutable reference to that as mute IOSB as u size, as uh, const um, object attributes as u size. Then we have the share access zero and the open options zero. Okay. All right, so now we have to make a uh, repr c struct object attributes and object attributes in this case. Uh, we're gonna go take a squiz. We're gonna go find what that is. Actually, hmm. Hmm. How do I wanna do this? Mm, object attributes. It might not be defined. Um, what I might want to do is rip out these uh, headers. Let me see if they're just on the uh, Visual C++ ISO. Um, 7Z eight zero X. I'm gonna imagine that these are probably not gonna be extracted. Oh, they are, thank God, fuck yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, MS Dev. Okay. So go to NT. Oh my God. Uh, CD MS Dev, C tags are dot, Vim tag object attributes. Hmm. Yep. Not defined. Okay. Um, well, I don't think this has changed. Otherwise, we'll have to go and figure out how they uh, structure these object attributes, which kind of sucks. Kind of don't want to have to do that. Um, tag, uh, IO status block. Uh, sorry. Tag IO status block. So this one, pro wow. Really? Really? Oh, uh, that sucks. Um, okay. We're gonna just hope that these haven't changed much. Uh, we've got a length. So U32, we have a root directory, um, which is a handle. And we have a type handle uh, is a con, uh, let's just say a mutable reference to U8. So this is a handle. Um, we have a name. This is a Unicode string. Then we have attributes. This is a U32. We have a security descriptor. 
which is a uh, void, so we'll say mute U8. We have a security quality of service, which is a mutable U8. Yeah, this is definitely not changed. This is the same layout it's been forever. Um, okay, so then we have object attributes. We have a length. The length is size of uh, core mem, size of object attributes. Then we have root, um, which is a handle. So this is a core pointer null mute, no root directory. If it's null, then object name must be a fully qualified name. Okay. Otherwise, it has to be relative. So then we have name. Uh, this is a punicode string. Um, okay. Then we have name, name. We have a uh, sec desk. This is a uh, standard core pointer null mute. And we won't clean up this code until we know it works because this is not great. But this is gonna get us a, a good idea of how these like syscalls are uh, constructed and stuff. And um, that's something that you're probably not super familiar with. Uh, calling syscalls directly is not trivial. Repr C struct unicode string. Unicode string in this case is a uh, length, max length, and a buffer. Um, U16. Uh, it's a pointer to a buffer. Okay, mm, that's an ARF. That's an ARF, and uh, that's an ARF. Hey, Moose, how you doing? Okay, that looks good, and uh, hey, mm hmm. Okay, iOS B. Oh, yep, iOS status block. Let's go and do that quick. iOS status block is really easy. iOS status block is what returns kind of the, uh, the result. Um, struct. I have status block. This has a union uh, status U size, and then information, which is also U size. Okay. Then we have the iOS B. Uh, let mute. iOS B is equal to uh, I iOS status block. Um. Status zero, information zero. So this is where it will eventually start returning status codes to us when we're doing it right, hopefully. Um, object attributes, don't need to specify. Okay. Uh, attributes, all right. Word for name not found in a scope, yep. Let name is equal to Unicode string. Um, this is going to be uh, len five max len. Uh, this is in bytes. Pretty sure. Pretty sure Unicode strings are in bytes. Um, object attributes. Unicode string, yes, bytes. Um, so uh, what do we want? Con out that, so 12, six, uh, 14. And we'll make helpers for all of these things when time passes. Uh, but right now we don't care about it. Uh, con out. Um. Okay. Um, we might need Alec if we want to do that. We're just gonna we're just gonna do a little bit of this for now. Okay. 
No null. Shouldn't need nulls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. Um. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. And we'll just say that this is uh, U8 buffer for now. Uh, 48. Once we have things working, obviously we can start make things work, you know? Um, I could make an allocator really fast, but uh, we're not going to right yet. Right yet. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, U32. Okay. Object attributes. Missing uh, attributes. Okay. Uh, mute handle. Yep, that makes sense. So this is mute. Okay, so theoretically, this is going to maybe do something. Let's see what we get. Um, ooh, that's new. That's new. Uh, Python hex 2 to the 32 minus... Uh, one oh seven three seven four one seven six five. Co three b invalid parameter question mark. Um, uh, ooh, object path syntax bad. Ah, holy shit! No fucking way. <laughs> that holy shit it's actually working oh my god <laughs> holy shit uh, i was expecting that we'd fight with this for a little bit before it did anything of value um okay um nt open file con out hmm con out uh, path, come out path. Hmm. Any idea when we're ending the stream? Probably pretty soon here. Uh, I need to figure out how count out works. Fuck. Um. Oh, it's, uh, this is, I think, that. Okay. So, technically, this is slightly different. Okay, um, that also, we need to figure out if we are setting up the reference to that correctly. Yeah, and I think we are. I think that is one of the, I think that's probably the address of the stuff. So we just need to make sure we're going to confirm quickly. We're going to load our binary. Um, actually, uh, open recent. Do we have our MIPS thing open? MIPS test. No, we don't. Okay. Uh, boop, 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 boop. MIPS test. Target, release, oh, no, nope. target this, release, MIPS test. I just want to make sure that it's actually passing in a path. And this is, uh, let's just look at this. What is this? Yeah, that is con out. So that should technically be working. Um, let's further go and debug it. Um... And let's put a breakpoint, a break uh, 16 hex. So right before our syscall, we're going to do an asm break ox16. And this is going to let us get a nice breakpoint without having to step through here and figure all that complex shit out. Uh, go. OK, so here's our breakpoint, um, dt. Um, Can I do this? Uh, 
Hmm. Nope. Um. So, uh, we'll do a DD of SP. And here we can see the arguments in the order. Oh, we haven't called the function yet, have we? Um, P, 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 P. That wasn't what I wanted. Um, bu -bu 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 go. Uh, okay, this is the branch into the function. Um, okay, so we have our register set up. So we have a arg1, arg2, arg3, arg4. Um, so let's DD A1. Really? DD CA 07 C8. Okay, so this is what we're passing in. Uh, actually, do we want A1? No, we want A2. Wait. Well, now I'm very confused. Uh, A0 and A1 should be 0. Uh, trace. There's our syscall. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Um, DD1 to FD50. Right. So these are the arguments. Or this is the that structure. So 18 hex is the size. And then we have a um, object attribute structure. We have the root directory, and then we have the Unicode string, uh, one, two, FD40. And this is the size E, and then the string itself. Can I even do this? Okay, um, one, three, three, seven, oh, one, twenty-eight. Yep, there's con out dollar sign, okay. So that is a, okay, I think it's working. Yeah, I think it's working. I didn't know if like the data stuff was getting passed through, but it looks fine. So, um, nt open file con out. Hmm, how would I do this? Do I need like the slash, slash question mark slash? Hmm. Does anyone know? Um, slash slash question mark slash null 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 uh, Okay, so we added how many? One, two, three slash slash question mark slash. We added four, so we added eight. Hmm. Oh, whoa, what, uh, what's that? That's new. Um, 107374177. Uh, this is 33 hex. Object name invalid. Hmm. Okay, not cool. Not cool. Um... Hmm. 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 Now I'm kind of hoping that one of these exists. That's all caps. DOS devices pipe. Um, what's that? Slash slash dot slash con.
That's interesting. UNC. Okay, let's let's try this. Slash slash dot slash con. Um, okay, and then what is this? Slash slash dot slash C O N seven fourteen. Hmm. Hmm. Could use dot len for the length? Nah, that's really hard. Uh, uh mute name length is name buffer len mm, max length. Uh is it not con out? I don't know if it is. That might get remapped. Whoa, 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 what? Whoa. Um, dot slash slash dot slash count out. It's a fake handle. Um, redirected to CSR functions? Wait, really? <laughs> is that, is that true? Okay, then we could try, uh, we could try a, a real path then. Um, I forget what paths look like. Um... Please read. That's not gonna work. I'm not. I'm not calling those functions. Those are kernel functions. Um. Uh. Do I want DOS devices? Do I want like one of these? What's a uh, 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 Windows full path? I always forget. There's so many. There's slash slash dot. There's slash slash question. Um, um, fully qualified object name. That's what I want. Mm, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba. Fully qualified object name. Uh, NT kernel. Once in a name. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I always forget the gross ass paths. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. hmm.
DOS devices C temp. Okay. 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 Uh, we're gonna do slash slash DOS devices C slash slash, and then we're gonna look at or we're actually in D. Hmm. These nuts. Uh, nuts dot text. Okay. Uh, D. Nuts dot text. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. No. No, no. No, no. And then hopefully we just didn't miss any nulls, because if we did, then it doesn't work. All right. Uh, uh, no fucking way. No fucking way. No way. No way. Okay. Okay. Let's look at IOSB status then. Um. No, that's okay. That, well, that's just successful. Um. Okay. So let's do a NT write file. Hmm. NT write file, I think, is easier. Um. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need a syscall nine. This is called nine. Arg seven. Arg eight. Arg nine. Okay, and then we'll just go find the uh, NT write file. Uh, C7. 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 NT write file. C7. Uh, NT write file. Pretty obvious. Okay. Mm hmm. Now we're going to do a uh, syscall nine. Um, okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let ret equals this a syscall nine. Syscall, syscall, nt write file. All right, we need the handle. Uh, this is a handle. Okay, then we need the event. This is the, uh, this is a, a null. Uh, APC routine, APC context, IO status block. Okay, I can grab an IO status block. Okay, IOSB. And then we have a buffer. B ASDF, size, four. Uh, as pointer as u size. Okay, then we have a four, and then we have the byte offset, which is zero, and then we have the key, which is zero, and there we go. That's just call nine. Okay, mm, there we go. Okay, so this is probably gonna fail because I don't think we get right perms. Um, let's see what this is. 107, 3741790. Uh, this is a 22 hexer. That's probably permissions. Access denied. Fantastic. That's what I like to see. So now we can just do instead, uh, when we open the file, we can request uh, desired access, access mask. Uh, we'll say uh, generic all. Uh, which is this, I think. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, it's generic all, so that's gonna be the second argument to open file, access mask. 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, okay. That's a new one. Uh, that's probably invalid handle. 107374 It's probably invalid handle. Yeah, 8. Ooh, 8 is parameter, I think. No, it is invalid handle. Whew! Okay. Uh, invalid handle because that open didn't happen. Uh, so access mask. Let's, uh, let's double check that. Let's double check that that is what an access mask is. So we'll go and open, uh, hello world.c. Okay, that's cool. Uh... That. Gotta adjust our date time, I think. Oh, yep, yeah, definitely have to do that. Otherwise, things wouldn't compile. Um, okay, there we go. And then we, uh... Let's make a workspace. This is, a uh, Console application. Astiff. Create. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make a... Gonna make a new file. Int. Include standardlib.h. Include standardio.h. Include, uh, uh windows.h. Int main void printf moose uh percent d uh generic uh let's just ask for uh write perms and then system pause okay there we go uh but compile that mm -hmm. Bu mm. yes add it mm -hmm. okay we're building C++ might have been a mistake. Um, and then how do I how do I act, uh, control F5? Mm, yeah. Uh, okay, let's print that as hex so it's usable. Um, <laughs> four. Okay, four with a bunch of zeros. All right, let's try four with a bunch of zeros. All right, so let's see if that works. I'm gonna guess it's not gonna work. Oh, is that different? Uh, 107-374-1811. C-O-D. Hmm. That's invalid parameter. Um, okay. Okay. Can you save the date somehow? Yeah, I don't think so, unfortunately. It's a luxury that we don't have. Um, yeah, so, um... Uh... Hmm... 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 We're gonna do, uh... Let rat is equal to this. If rat is not equal to zero, then we're gonna do a, a core pointer write volatile uh, four one four one four one four one as uh, mute u eight one. Okay, so that's how we know if that fails. Um, all right, so now now we have debugging. Okay, so we know that this is failing due to invalid parameter. Hmm. Interesting. And then this will fail with a crash? Oh, I think that crashed. I think that crashed. Yep, that crashed. Okay. So we know that that doesn't work. We know that this does work, though. And that's generic right, right? Right? Is that, is that what we did? Generic right. Okay. So we have generic right perms. Um, okay, so what's, what's the deal here? What sorts of things would we be doing wrong, then? Um, so that's an invalid parameter to this. Uh, okay. Let's return the handle that we got. Just to see. I I'm just curious if we, we have a, a handle. Yep, that's definitely a handle. So we were able to create a handle. Okay. 
So then, uh, NT write file. Uh, file handle, an event, which is optional. Uh, an APC routine and context, those are optional. We have an IO status block, which we pass in, in IOSB. We have a buffer. Um, okay, that's pretty good. And we have a length. Uh, yep. I think we need to give a byte offset. I think we need to supply this. Um... I think that's the problem. I, I think I need to provide a byte offset. That's That sounds about right. Uh, let me large integer is equal to 0, comma, 0. And these are U32s. Uh, two of those. And then we'll just say this is the li as mute pointer as um, a U size. Uh, it's this argument. Okay, now this time it's gonna work. Oh. Huh? 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 Uh. Dir. Type. Nuts. Dot. Text. Mm, okay, that's pretty pog. All right, uh, there we go. Now we're writing Rust. Um, okay, so now all we have to do is open that file, and then, uh, yeah, this is where we can get really cool. Um, uh, oh, yeah, and there's also this high part set to negative 1 and low part set to file right to end of file. So we're gonna we're gonna try this. We're gonna try. We're gonna try. We're gonna try this. Okay. Mm hmm. Uh, file right to end of file. No. Okay. Uh, we'll just track that. Okay. Mm Oh, yeah, this can just be an OU64, right? Because it's because we're in Rust. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Um, wow, wow. Oh, it's so nice that we can use our real fucking language. All right. Uh, hello, world. Nice. Nice. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so now uh, now we need to make a, a log file, I guess. So this will be, um, uh, let's just do, um, yeah, so this is gonna be the log file and we're gonna write it zero. Um, and then we're gonna just do, um, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're just gonna, this'll be pretty easy, chat. All right. All right, and then once this is working, then we can start working on fuzzing. Macro rules print. Okay, mm-hmm. And uh, print is just like this. Uh-huh. And then we'll just do we'll just do create print. Uh create format args. Okay. Okay, uh we'll print apples um, five. Okay, that's pretty good. That's a good step. 
and then we'll make uh, make these functions. So format arg. So I think we don't want that. Oh, this is core. Okay, and then all we have to do is make a print, uh, fn print. This takes args, uh, something like this, and we'll just get this going real fast. That's uh, a core format. Uh, okay, and then we'll do uh, args dot, uh, argument. We'll do arguments. Um, bup, 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 bup. Uh, I think we want to do write. We want to do write into a uh, writer. Um, no. Write format args. I think that's that's what we want to do. Something like that. That looks good. Uh, okay, uh, struct writer, uh, impl, uh, core format write for writer, um, fn write stir self, uh, something like that, yep, that, that looks about right. Um, stir, stir, um, s stir, this returns a result, uh, this, uh, this is core format results. Uh, right format. Oh, yeah. Uh, use core format right. Oh, yeah, we can just do this in this. No reason for us to actually call this. So we'll do instead, we'll do create bink. Um, write format, format args, this. Uh, okay. Um, 15. That's mute. This is okay. Uh, this doesn't need to exist. Uh, 89. Let's do this. Use our core format. Right. And then this is going to be our writer and handle. Okay. Which means that this has a U size. And I have access to a handle. And then we can go here. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Self.0, IOSB. Yep, something like that. That looks good. Mm -hmm. I have status block. That looks pretty good. Mm, that looks great. Derive default. Uh, let me at ISB is IS status block default. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Put a little semi in there. And then here, this will just be uh, s dot as pointer uh, as u size. This will be s dot len. 112 ret yep don't have ret anymore we're just gonna do ret zero uh that looks pretty good um 36 this is unsafe and then we also need to track the current index that we're writing to in the file we don't have a great way of doing that we're gonna do uh stuff Offsets uh, is atomic U32. Um, is atomic U32 new zero? Okay, that looks great. Mm. Okay, use core sync atomic atomic U32 ordering. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. So then this is going to be uh, offset.fetchAddS.len. Oh, uh, use size. Mm, use size. Okay. Fetch add s dot len ordering relaxed as u64. So now we have a u64 representation of that, and we incremented that. We passed that as li. That's our offsets. We should then be able to do this. And then let's see if this works. Uh, no, that, that seemed to crash. Okay, that's not great. Um, hmm. 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 Well, that, does, that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, that's not hot, to be honest. Not, not the, not the, not the best thing I've ever seen. Um, ooh, is that? Wait. Maybe. Um, R, U, PC, uh, uh, what's PC, what's PC, what's PC, where is it, where is it, where's PC, where the fuck is PC, is it fur, hmm, um, I'm really curious what that is, um, I don't, I think this is, uh, I think atomics aren't supported. So 8C8, let's look at what 8C8 is. Uh, open recent, this, MIPS test. Yep, that is, uh... Uh, fucking where was it? AC8? EXT. Ah. Huh. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, who knows what that kind of instruction is. Um, uh, what do we want to do here? Um, Rusty targets. Uh, targets is going to be this. C target CPU. Uh, print. Uh, target CPUs. MIPS. Hmm. Um, C target CPU equals, uh, let's just say MIPS2. That's, that's, that's pretty old. That's pretty old. MIPS2. Okay. Hmm. Really? Really? What was that address? Uh, 8C8. Uh, 8C8, EXT, okay, uh, MIPS 32R2, maybe it's a, maybe it's an old thing that got deprecated, <laughs> maybe that's an old instruction, <laughs> um, Dude, what is this instruction?
Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. what the fuck? I feel like this code didn't change at all either. It's still at 8C8. Hmm. Okay, let's take a look at EXT. Extract bit field, MIPS32. Yeah, this is MIPS32 release too. Uh, okay, let's try MIPS32R1 then, because that shouldn't be getting generated for MIPS32R1. It's a bit extract instruction. Oh. Um, let's try MIPS32. Just want out Linux VDSO exists? Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the party, dude. Uh, does it still exist? 8C8, was it? Okay, that's fucking cool. Nice, Clang. Nice LVM, really good code gen. Um, oh, features. Mm, let's just say we're gonna say target features minus MIPS thirty two R two. We're gonna say we don't have support for that. And now it will work. Okay. Uh, target feature minus that. So minus MIPS 32R2 because I think that's just set in generically in this. Uh, 8C8. Is it going to be here, chat? 8. Was it 8C8? I don't, I don't see it. Yay! <laughs> we did it! Uh, okay, so, okay, now we're, oh, maybe we didn't do it. Uh, okay, um, what's this? What's that boo? What's that boo? What's that boo? Boo. Move Z. That's MIPS32. Hmm, okay, let's well, just minus MIPS32 then. Okay. Okay, boo. I wonder if this is going to put EXT back in there. Uh, move Z. Ah, no move Z. Okay. <laughs> What is this processor? Uh, BO4. <sighs> well, that's just not even an instruction. <laughs> that's just not even a real fucking instruction. <sighs> MIPS 32R2. Can I do this? Can I do commas? Okay, no MIPS 32R4. Everything else looks good. Uh, that looks great. <laughs> Alright, this, this time for sure. Okay, that's still admitting that. Uh, B04. Uh, what is that? <sighs> Mips highly experimental. Mips thirty two 
Nips too. Nips. Subset of Nips 4? That is also Nips 32? I like this. I like this one. This this is this is my favorite. That ah yeah. Oh, I like this because it's a subset of MIPS 3 and this. So this is this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> MIPS 3 under 32. Alright, this is the this is the dream. Oh my fucking god, it's 8C8 again! <sighs> Minus MIPS 32 R2. <sighs> okay, so now we have that. Sick. What the fuck is this? Uh, Mips R4000. What's the fucking R4000? It's Mips 3. Um... MIPS 3 architecture. Okay. Um, cool. I thought it was MIPS 32R2 for some reason. For some reason. Uh, so, uh, target CPUs. Mm, CPU. MIPS 3. Target feature. Minus MIPS 32R2, because I think that is set in the um, target specification file. So, target CPU is MIPS 3, target feature, do not do MIPS 32R2. And this time, it will work. I swear to God, LVM, if you let me down right now. Is LVM going to let me down? What, like, what is this instruction? What is that? B28. Oh, is that the atomic? Is that an atomic instruction? I think it's an atomic instruction. Yeah, I think it's an atomic. Um. Uh, let's open it up. Uh, where are we going? Boba? Uh, Leet B28. Mm, no. Leet OB28. Oh, oh, six, one. Yeah, okay, so it's move Z. <sighs> That's MIPS 32.
Why is it emitting that? <clears throat> this is fucking insane. MIPS 3. Target CPU, MIPS 3. Target features. Time to rewrite LVM in Rust. Let's target MIPS 32, I guess. It's probably some hard coded shit. It. Is it like soft float, maybe? So there's the move Z, but move Z is not valid on this processor, unfortunately. Um, um I could, hmm. Yeah, because it needs to be. Yeah, let's see where that code gen is. I'm really curious. I'm really curious. Uh, let's build this uh, cargo build. All right. And then we'll do... Uh... Uh, debug. Uh, grep. Bo boo. Wait, is it not that? No, it's it's boo. Hmm. I see. So, uh, it seems to be put in by the optimizer. <sighs> Opt level two. <laughs> We're getting absolutely got right now. Hey, op level two? Op level three? Is it seriously op level two? Or op level Z. Let's try Z. B O O A. What about S? Uh, it's a problem with S as well. Op level two, or get rid of the op level specifier. How did that rebuild so fast? Um, yeah, I think it's literally that optimization level. <laughs> the optimize for size. Okay. Oh my fucking god, it never ends. Oh, it's 6 1. Ah, it's A 80A now. Hmm. Okay, it's not that. Um, opt level zero. Uh, 
Okay. That's not great. It's not. It's... Hmm. It's not great. Um. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> no, that's better or worse. God damn it, Rust. Or, it's not Rust's fault. It's LVM's fault. Again. Again, it's LVM's fault. <sighs> yeah, I think it's emitting a lot of invalid instructions. Like, pretty sure those are only invalid due to being MIPS 3. Mm. Uh, let's do... Oops, three. Target CPU doesn't seem to be doing anything. I'm not 100% sure why. Time to upgrade the CPU. Rust code gen GCC when? So this will have a bunch of things, but if I say MIPS32, this now will be fine. And specifically, I want to look for, like, I don't know if that's a tab or not. I think it's a tab. So, MIPS 3. This is definitely changing what it should be generating, but it's not. Um, I think this is a tab, though. X, O, uh... Uh, what's a fucking tab? Grep. Uh, oh, I can use Perl style? Okay. So when I do MIPS 3, I have all of these instructions are invalid, right? So these are all instructions that didn't decode to a valid thing. But when I build this for MIPS32, um, I don't get that. I don't think I get any, which basically means that it is generating. Yeah, I get none. So MIPS32, it's totally fine. <laughs> Time to translate move Z. Yeah, let's see what we can do here. We we now know that very specifically what the problem is. Um, so let's see if we can. Uh, CPU help. Uh, MIPS. So, I think this is doing, um... I just don't think we're going to be able to boot on this. Uh, R4000. So, an R4000, a MIPS R4000 is MIPS 3. Um... Uh, MIPS 32. What implemented MIPS 32? Um. Hmm. Uh. 
There's the R4400. This is the R4200. That was MIPS 3. R4600. Um, also MIPS 3. Oh, these are all, okay, so these are all classic processors. I see. So, I mean, we can we can try this, but I don't think it will even be able to boot. Because I don't think uh, MIPS is backwards compatible. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh... Son of a... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, shut down. Are you fuzzing it on MIPS? Because it's more fun. Um, it's a harder, pro it's a harder problem, which makes it more fun, which makes it more realistic. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we have an option, and the option, I think, is, um, are these all move Z? These ones just don't even know what it is. Um... Hmm. What we really want is the MIPS 332. That's the dream. That's the dream. Oh! Hmm? Yeah, I don't... I, I think it just thinks it's an... Uh, I don't think it worked. Yeah, it thinks it's rel 2. <sighs> LLVM, why? 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 Um... Why? Why, LLVM? Why? Hmm. So we have moves these. Uh, that's a move Z. And that's a move Z. I don't know what this 417 instruction is. To be honest. Um, so, let's see. Because for some reason, Binja doesn't seem to handle it. Yeah, Binja doesn't know what that is. Which is kind of strange, because I don't think it's that obscure. Uh, but let's see if we can find it. Um, uh, where's the table? Where's my MIPS decode table? Where is it? Is there really no table? Um... There it is. Okay. Uh, so we want. Uh, MIPS. Technically, we want MIPS 32. I don't think there's going to be a separate one, though. Uh, so we will have MIPS uh, starts with bits 5 through 3 and bits... Oh, that's special encoding. 
Uh, encoding in the opcode field. Uh, what's this in binary? Okay, so we have uh, one with that many zeros. Uh, that appears to be a load byte, but I don't think it is. Maybe it's the other way? Wait. What? What? Um... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not extending it. Okay, yeah, you're totally right. Um... Sick. What? Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, oh, 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 one. Oh, 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 one. Uh, we got a regim, so we all want to go to the regim table. Um. Okay, so we got a regim, and then if we take that, and we want to shift it by eight, the uh, sixteen. Uh, print this shift by 16. And then we want to end that. Uh, this is completely a stupid way of doing this. And that with uh, B11111. Okay, 23. Mm. So bin this. Oops. Uh, one o. Oh. Yep, twenty, and then three. Begezel. Is it a branch likely? Cause when were these valid? Um, I think we're getting the same binary, so we're going to look at, uh, 284. Uh, grep 284. And this is hopefully a 417001. It's not. It's just not used anywhere. Move Z. There's only three of them. That's so frustrating. There's only three Move Zs and we're fucking hitting them. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Yeah, I'm really curious when they added that. Batch and disable movesy. Yep. Oh, God. I don't know when that was added to, let's see, um, MIPS IV. Mips IV. Move Z. 
Move conditional on zero. It was defined in MIPS 4, actually. So MIPS 4 had it. MIPS 3. Um, yeah, there's no move C. It's a MIPS 4. So let me see if I can do some weird shit. Nope. <sighs> um, so what's a MIPS R4 processor? Let me see if uh, we can maybe run a MIPS. MIPS 4. Okay, let's, let's read about what changed. MIPS 4. It's a superset of MIPS 3, compatible with all existing MIPS. Designed for mainly floating points and access to operands, an addressing mode, an index addressing mode. Um, several features for that, FP. So if it's, if it's compatible with all existing versions of MIPS, then we should be able to run a MIPS 4 processor. Um... MIPS32 is based on MIPS2. Okay, so it's a superset of MIPS3. All right. All right. Okay, so we need to find a MIPS4 processor. Uh... MIPS for processor, IV processor. Because if it's strictly a superset, then we should be able to just run uh, Windows just fine. List of MIPS architecture process. Oh, here we go. Ah, all right. The R5K. Mm. So there's the two. Uh, anything in here stand out? Oh my god. R8K? Uh, do you see an 8K? Hmm. M14K? 74KF. Uh, uh, that's MIPS 32 or 2. Okay. Mm. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Uh, MIPS this. It's like, that's some new shit. Um, I-65? No. I would want like an R specifically. Yeah, here's the 24. Ah, oh, yeah, there's R4K. And R everything else. Target MIPS, this might help. Okay. Um MIPS thirty-two. MIPS sixty-four. Really six long song. Uh that's MIPS 3. That's a 5K. And I think 5K 
is yeah, that's MIP64. Hmm. VR? Um... MIPS4. Hmm. Is there really no MIPS4? MIPS3, MIPS32R2, Nano MIPS. Yup. No MIPS4. How does it support so many things? <sighs> Kimu MIPS 4. Got the tree. Yep, that's what we're going to do. So we're just going to fix it. <sighs> and 64 is MIPS 3. I think it's R4K, actually. All right. <laughs> Fucking insane. All right. Hmm. Uh, ooh, what's this? Wait, what the fuck's this? Oh, that's not mix. Uh, I see. Mips. These are not Mips sixty four, and they need to be Mips sixty four. Wow. Wow. Um. So the R4000 cuz I bet if I do um Kimu system mipsol the primogen holy shit coming in with the big raid how is your stream Hope you're writing some some good code today. I hope you were a uh, oh, 36 hour. Holy shit, that just finished. Oh my god. Oh god, go sleep, dude. I'm tired just thinking about it. <laughs> Holy shit. Um uh, 64 EL. Wow. Oh. Yeah, so it's, uh, we've been trying to figure out why LLVM is generating uh, MIPS32 instructions when we're trying to use MIPS3. Um, yeah, we're getting kind of blasted. <laughs> Only got 20, it's 27 hours to go for you. 36 is brutal. God damn. Yeah, congrats on that. That's insane. <laughs> Jesus. MIPS. Okay, so that's MIPS 64. And I bet this will have. Oh, does this not? Where are these defined? 
Where are these defined? Can can I just what? <laughs> what are the, what are these? Mips arc choices. Uh, I guess is that here? Uh, R four thousand. Lots of money raised for the kiddos. Hell yeah, that's so good to hear. Elf greater than Felf. What happens if you try R5000 anyways? I don't know, let's fucking try it. Um... Okay, so let's see if it's case sensitive. It is case sensitive. So, R5, uh, R5000? No. Um, ba 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 ba. Oh. So we know that it should specifically be this case sensitivity. CPU defs dot ink. Okay. Uh, that's 4KC. Hmm. Hmm. I was hoping it was just an out-of-date printout. Yeah, that's the dream. But, unfortunately... I just don't think there's a... MIP64. What's 5k EC? What's 5k... Uh, oh, we know that these are... Yeah, 5... MIPS 5kc. That's a 5k series, and 5k is a... Is that MIPS 4? I think that's MIPS 4. Because... Although R5000... R5000... 5K is MIP64. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yep, you're right. Um, okay. So, what does that leave us with for options here? Um. So, you want to find the processor definition, I guess, for the R4000. Um, so these are all the things. Here we go. If to find MIP64. This, R4000. Instruction flags. Let's see if there's anything that... Okay, this is the only... VR5432. Uh, ah! VR5432. It is MIPS4, but also VR54. Whatever that is. VR54. Uh, some MIPS 3 is move Z? Really? Um, let's take a look. Move Z. Uh... Is this I4? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. R5900? R5900 should be MIPS4, according to this. MIPS4 is R5900. Um, okay, so in theory, there is one processor that does support MIPS4, and it's this VR5432. <laughs> um, so that's, that's a thing. So we can try that and see what happens. I don't think it's going to work because it will probably maybe change some of the other parts. If anything, we can rebuild Kimu and we can make our own, we can make our own custom processor. Because that's, that's kind of what we're going to have to do. MMU type is the same? Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even look. Um... 
Where are we running that from? There we go. Uh, run.sh. Okay, so we're gonna say uh, CPU this. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna work, right? Oh! That's my that's my boot. Okay. Um that's my boot sound. All right. Um yes, yeah, so that's good. Um Okay. So, uh We should be in business now. Um properties. Okay. Thanks it's R4K, but that's fine. That's fine. Um the question is <laughs> Will it run? Uh, hello world. Mm, okay. Mm. Echo, uh, error code? Error level? Fuck! <laughs> Debug, uh, CDB. Hello world dot exe. Let's see what's happening. What's that? What's this instruction? Seven seven C thirty three. Xed. Um yes. Uh... And we'll do minus MIPS 32, minus MIPS 32R2. Let's just, let's just see. Let's see if that gets rid of the X instructions. Okay, there's no X. There are move Zs. Uh, we have some of these things. What, what did we figure out those were? Um, oh, did that work? <gasps> hey, woo, woo, okay, um, why did we get an extra bite? Why did we get extra bytes on the end of that file? Um, uh, hello, hello world from, uh, 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 Rust on Windows NT 4.0, uh, MIPS, and then, uh, we'll print, uh, 69. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh yeah, it's the new line. It, it's the it's the new line. Uh, we gotta do some curl if I guess. Um, and and type dot dot slash nuts. It's it's hard to say if it was notepad. Yeah, that works. CRLF, that fixes it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, so a uh, four blah in zero to 100 print apples. <laughs> oh, and we'll, we'll use the this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> hey, if LLVM literally worked, this wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah! <laughs> Holy shit, that's so fucking cool! Oh, it's so fucking cool! <laughs> wow! Wow.
Then to scratch all that and write to standard out. I don't think we can write to standard out. I think that I think that post is actually correct. I don't think that we have a way of writing to standard out. I think that we have to um we have to write to a file. Kind of tragic. I mean, we can just we can just write over the network. Actually, how how hard is that? Uh, networking might be really hard. We could maybe pass in a, a handle or something like that to an existing network socket. But WinSock would be brutal. But yeah, we could maybe just pass in an existing socket. I think that would work just fine. Maybe. Um, because I think you, can you NT write file to a socket? I think you can. I think you can. Which then means we could pass in a, a socket. How can we not write to standard out, but other programs can? So it sounds like that is actually done over RPC. So it sounds like writing to a console is actually fake, and it doesn't actually go to the kernel to write to the console. The, like, kernel 32 library talks to the, like, con host over RPC. So, of course, that's possible, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to do that. Dot JPEG. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that what does that leave us with? NT write file can write to sockets in XP. Uh, NT not sure. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, because that would be interesting because we could pass in a single argument to our program. Uh, that could be a socket handle. Let, uh, let's try it. Um, let's try it. Um, so I think what we'll do is here, this actually will work. Um, we have our felf serve and we'll go into felf serve and we're just going to slightly change this and we're going to be, uh, read data from user. Uh, and then we'll loop. And then we'll do, we'll get some uh, bytes. Eh, OU8, I don't know. Uh, 1024 is fine. Um, let bread is equal to sock.read mute bytes. And then we'll say if bread is equal to zero, return OK. So that's connection closed. Um, and then otherwise, we'll do uh, print this um and we'll do it directly so we'll do standard stir from utf8 of bread of uh bytes dot dot bread and then we'll unwrap that okay uh cargo install path dot ah read okay that needs to be mute uh unreachable yeah that's fair okay so uh install so now we can run the felf serve so now we're running a felf serve and then we'll pass in that socket so we have to build this as well, so hello world.c, open with uh, ms dev. Okay, and then we'll do cl hello world.c. All right, so all we have to do is we just change this. So we pass the existing socket. So we read everything off of that socket, and now uh, it will listen on the other side. So this will take a, uh, a socket. And we'll pass in the sock. I think we called it sock. Um. Oh. Gotta change the date. <laughs> uh. Okay. And then uh, ws win sock. Ah, uh, Winsock 2? What was it called? Uh, 
what the fuck was it? Fuck. Um, oh, let's make for all that text. Um, people remember what it was? Winsock dot lib? Winsock two dot lib? <sighs> okay, we'll, we'll just, we'll just go find it. <laughs> Dayzock 32 dot lib. <laughs> Hello world. Okay. Um uh did that uh what did that do? Okay. Um All right. So now what we should be able to do is we'll do a write to uh I guess we'll set the handle will be equal instead of handle we're just going to use um socket okay so it builds um oh shit <laughs> oh oh we're fucking gods wow <laughs> Sick. Uh, get status. Get ads for. Uh, get an it. Not get status. Get add source cargo star. Make file. Cargo. Get ignore it. Get status. Get commit am. Uh, nips. Open file and networking. Works. Okay. Get push. No, oh, we don't have a we don't have a push. Uh, okay. Uh, make. All right. So, uh, what we can do now is we can just get rid of all this shit then. Um, so offset. I don't think offset matters. I think we can just do zero. Let's try it. Uh, OU64. Let's just see. Oops. Yep. So offset doesn't matter. In fact, do I even need one? Can I pass a null pointer since it's a socket? Nope, still need one. Okay, um, because I think that tells you how many bytes were actually written as well. So this is um, offset mute offset syscall nine. Um, then we can get rid of basically everything. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, this is it. This is it, chat. Um, this is no longer offset. This is going to be a uh, socket. Okay, so we have a socket, and then we can do socket, and we'll do socket.store, uh, socket ordering, uh, uh, relax, doesn't matter. Okay, and then this prints. Um, and then this will do uh, socket dot load ordering relaxed. In fact, this can just be done on the writer itself. Um, actually, it's probably better here. It's probably slightly better here because we get to cache it for a bit longer. IO status block panic handler looks good. Okay, so um, core format write. Uh, method not implemented, 28 on use, uh, uh, yeah, what did I do? This. Okay, create a new writer. Bink. Okay, a bunch of unused shit, I guess. That's fine. Um, and then this is just, uh, we'll just discard the result of this. Because there's nothing we're really going to do to recover from that error. And here we go. Okay. Hello world. That works great. Okay, let's try and uh, let's try and go out of bounds. Let's try and go uh, print this. Mm, B moose, and let's go fifty two on moose. Okay. Okay. Uh. Uh. Oh yeah, I want to do uh, in print writer. 
Um, core format write. Write format, uh, capital. And then we can pass in, I think, a mutable reference to this. Uh, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Expected token, comma. Okay, that's out of bounds. That's fine. We can make that not uh, smart to rust by doing that. Okay, built. Shipped. Hello world from rust on Windows. Okay, sweet. And then that gets stuck, and that is great. So what we want to do now is in here, in our panic handler, uh, we're also going to have an exit, and then we'll print the panic info. And I think, I forget what they did, but they made panics better. Uh, I think you can just, they just implement display or some shit like that. Uh, PI. Like, literally, I think this works. Um. Oh, yeah, we're also gonna do print LN. Um. Print LN is just gonna be a, a print, and then we'll print again. Uh, RN. <laughs> um, Rust actually does these format strings, so we'll do these. Okay, print ln down here. We'll do a print ln. Actually, we are gonna do crlf just because we know that's what uh, Windows really likes. In this version of Windows, in this era, it actually kind of matters a lot more than it does in modern days. Like, modern days, you can just do kind of new lines, and it's just fine. Back in the old days, not so much. Okay, so theoretically... Yeah, there you go. That's a panic. There's a panic. We just panicked from fucking MIPS on NT 4.0. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking cool. Oh, that's fucking cool. All right. <laughs> that's so fucking cool. <laughs> it's just rust now. Uh, and sent it over the network. Yeah, I mean, we kind of cheated there, but whatever. This is a lot easier. But yeah. There we go. Um... Yeah, now all we have to do is probably probably make the connection go the other way so that we don't even have to, like, up arrow in this VM. We could just have a terminal. Um, hmm. How do I want to do that? So I could have this connection stay open. Um... I could have a separate connection. Hmm. Hmm. That's so fucking cool. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> oh, man. And then if we disable print, um, can I do this? Um, not argtt, but, um... Is it that? Uh, da, 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 I gotta match it, um... Is that right? I think that's right. Okay, so then what we can do, uh, if we ever want to see how big our binary is, if we comment this out, this will get rid of all the format strings. 
Um, and we'll be able to see that our actual binary size is 152 bytes. <laughs> um, and then this we can call exit uh, negative one. So that's a panic. Uh, or just not zero. So if we have a not zero, we know that we panicked. And in this case, we can then look at uh, echo error level. And, uh, oh. Mm. Mm. Let's exit one. Let's just see what happens here. Oh, it's not panicking because this print never happens. Um, yeah, and, and since that print never happens, it optimizes that out. Uh, yeah. Panic ASDF. Let's just explicit panic. Okay, there's one. And then it's negative one if we actually do not zero. That's what we want. So negative one indicates a panic. Yep. And there we go. So now it's 360 bytes. And I think that's just because of that panic. I think panic actually makes that uh, formatted string, unfortunately. Wow, that's actually even bigger. Okay. Well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, all we know is that uh, we're able to just do whatever we want now. So this is save the socket, and then this should also be extern fn. Oh, it is. Okay. All right. So there we go. <laughs> uh, that's fucking great. 5k for print ln? Yeah, that's pretty fair. Uh, Rust has pretty bad format libraries. They're nice, and they're fast, but they use a lot of space. So now, what I should be able to do is... Yeah. Yep, hello world from Rust. Alright. I think that is where we're gonna wrap this up today. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty good progress. I gotta go uh, eat dinner. So... Hope everyone enjoyed that. That was a fun little adventure. Uh, and now we can start working on uh, working on a fuzzer. So, uh, we're gonna send you off somewhere and I don't know where yet. Let's see. Let's see. Um, hmm. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's, who's doing some programming? Uh, or I guess development. Software and game development. Um, and... Let's see. Is anyone doing, anyone doing some leech shit? No one doing leech shit today? Man, from having nothing to having print LN in one day. Yeah, hello world! Um, okay, this is, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. and all of it was due to LVM. If LVM didn't fight us that whole time, it would have been right the elf loader and we would have been done. <laughs> um, let's see. Who's this? There's someone working on an indie game. I have no idea what language. Uh, but I'm gonna send you over there. <laughs> be, in, be nice, behave, have fun. Have a fantastic evening. See you around.